Hey, Kelly, how are you? I'm great, Bo. How are you? I'm doing awesome. Have you heard about Anchor? You mean that big, heavy thing that you throw off the side of a boat? No, silly. The podcast app that helps you distribute your podcast episodes to a bunch of major websites. Wow, that's super cool. Yeah, it's a creation tool that allows you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Ooh, I love less work. That sounds fantastic. And you can even make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. Ooh, I also love to make money. Yeah, so just download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Do it. Do it. How's it going, everybody? This is Precisely Podcast. And you are listening on the airwaves to Kelly right now. And also with me, virtually, I have Bo. Hey, how's it going, everyone? How are you, Bo? I am doing very well. And we have a special guest today, Chris, a.k.a. I'm probably going to mess this up, Koozie Retro Games. You nailed it. Koozie Retro Games. Sweet. (laughs) I usually mess up IG names all the time. All right. So it's koozie. <laughs> yep. Like a drink koozie. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of people. How... Okay. A lot, of, that... a lot of people go with cuzzy. Yeah. That's what I was going to say. But you decided against it. Smart man. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. <laughs> so how are you, Chris? Doing good. Uh, the weather's finally getting nice here in Michigan. We've had high 70s, low 80s the last few days. So that's been really nice. Had a, had a nice Memorial Day weekend, and I hope all is well with you guys. Yeah, I uh, went kayaking for the first time this year with a, a friend and, and my wife, and we had a great time. It was so much fun. A lot of people shooting guns, though, on the creek, wow. which was a little unsettling, <laughs> to say the least. And, like, the guns just kept getting, like, bigger and bigger caliber sounding like <laughs> like uh oh, the last one just sounded like bombshells going off we're like what the hell is going on but uh everyone was safe besides one person that was behind us in a different group that definitely capsized and hyperventilated oh, but uh besides that everyone was safe and we all had a great time <laughs> oh my god yeah you were floating down by my house probably a little bit Oh, true that. Yeah, I didn't even yeah. think about that. Yeah, yeah, it's real close to where we live. It you literally, guys... it literally you... comes up to my neighborhood. Like, there's a park in my neighborhood that you could essentially push off from if you wanted. Oh, cool. Yeah. So you guys both live near water. Um. Yeah, we're we're near a major river in the and... central Pennsylvania area. Yeah, nice. and creeks and stuff and lakes. Yeah. Yeah. There's How about plenty you? Of stuff. Yeah, I'm about 15-ish minutes away from Lake St. Clair, so I'll go uh, just dock fishing there all the time during the summer and a little bit of ice fishing in the winter. But my girlfriend's family has a cabin up in Manistee, which is in northern Michigan, and there's all kinds of lakes and stuff over there, kind of near Lake Michigan. So we were up there on the water this this past weekend. That's awesome. Nice. It's a good It's a good time to be out right now. I mean, you were saying the weather's getting nice up there. Here it was it was pretty nice. The last couple of days have been kind of brutally hot, though. Yeah, oh like gosh, yeah. humid. It's getting to the humid summer, which I hate. Um, but hate you know, that nice, that nice seventies, low eighties is where I like to be. And that was basically this weekend, and that was so nice to just be able to like sit outside and read a book and you know just relax in the in the nature. Exactly. I don't like when it's crazy hot either because I don't tan. I sunburn. Oh, yeah. But my girlfriend <laughs> is the complete opposite. Her idea of fun is laying out in a lawn chair and soaking in the sun, and I would be just hiding underneath a beach towel. <laughs> yeah. I feel that. I feel that burn. <laughs> Definitely. So, how old are you, Chris? 21. You said, uh, 21. 21. Yep. My birthday's actually on Sunday. I'll be 22 on Sunday. Ooh, happy oh, birthday. Congrats. Happy Thank you. Birthday. Thank you. A little early. This will, yeah, this will be coming out a day before your birthday. So Sweet. That's awesome. I remember when I was 22. <laughs> <laughs> Back actually, in my I, day. Yeah, actually, I don't remember it at all. <laughs> <laughs> I was probably an asshole. I mean, uh, I kind of still am, but, you know, probably more so. <laughs> yeah. 
That's uh, fun. So you just graduated college, you said? Yeah. So I just graduated college about a month ago. So it was yeah. kind, of, kind of a weird feeling. Um, I lived on campus all four years. So it would have felt more, I guess, real if I were to take my last final, kind of turn it in and walk across campus one more time, just being like, okay, I'm actually done. But the fact that I took my last final just sitting in my basement, and it didn't feel really, really, really real. I felt like I had to go back to class the next week. But uh, oh, they, true, yeah. They because of the whole COVID nineteen stay at home mm-hmm. order, um, they actually pushed back our graduation to the last weekend of August. A lot of schools here in Michigan have actually just canceled their graduations or yeah. made them online. But it's nice that they kind of pushed it back to the last weekend of August. If it even still happens, then we're actually still under the stay at home order here in Michigan until June twelfth. Oh, okay. wow, wow, yeah, we're um, we're just coming out of it uh kind of sort we're of. we're in the yellow phase of mm. coming back into into life which i, I don't know uh, i don't know <laughs> that's a whole different thing but yeah, yeah it's weird nobody really knows what's going on but that's fine and that's not why we're here to talk to you but, yeah. uh, nope. but i'm glad it, that your your graduation was just you know postponed and they're giving you a shot to to celebrate and, that in a exactly. couple months exactly Exactly. And that you still got your degree too, because my one buddy's going for uh, like electrician work, like actual like tower climbing and stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, that got pushed back indefinitely. So he's just like, I need to take the actual like hands on classes still, everything else I was able to finish, but not the hands on stuff. And they don't know when that's going to happen. So it sort of sucks. Yeah, it's it's crazy, but you know, it's it's good that you know you've got something to look forward to there, and you're done. And I mean, I remember finishing college, uh, whatever, a couple of years ago. I graduated in 2013 was when I was in college. Mm-hmm. Um, I remember leaving and being done, you know, with everything, and I had a winter graduation just because of like some scheduling stuff. Yep. I had to do an extra semester, so I had a winter graduation. I remember leaving and then like on the way out, it just like all hit me that like, you know, everything I knew for the last four and a half years was just going to change. And I was like, damn it. No. (laughs) And I realized like, no, turn around, go back. I don't want to leave yet. I'm not ready. And I was like super scared. But, you know, I, I mean, things are different, you know, coming out into this job market and stuff. So I hope that it works in your favor, but, you know, just to keep pushing through it and it'll it'll get better and yep. you'll know, find your niche and yeah it's it's crazy just definitely transferring out of that life oh yeah definitely like you said it's all you've known for the past four years and for me like i said it was a different different experience the end of it but i'm just excited to be done and see what else has to come now yeah for sure what'd you get your degree in marketing oh cool that'll yeah, be cool. that'll be fun I, have a, I know a lot of people that work in like marketing kind of situations and that always seems like such a fun kind of job like fun kind of field to yeah. work in you know so my, there's, there's so my dream to is to do sports marketing I want to work for a uh, sports team I had an uh internship in college where I worked for an automotive company but it wasn't really my cup of tea so I really mm-hmm. want to do sports marketing yeah that's that's a good spot to be too you know sports marketing is that's the real deal. And Definitely. you get those like comp tickets and stuff. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, should we uh, crack some beers here? I already cracked mine open. All right. We'll wait Sounds to be ahead of us. <laughs> then, Bo, you go first. What are you drinking on? I am drinking on Steady Eddie IPA. It is from Union Craft Brewing out in baltimore maryland huh oh, and it had that. yeah it's my first time drinking it i had a guy that i actually met this past weekend uh do a beer trade with me on top of a transaction that i'll talk about later today um, it sounds like you bought <laughs> drugs from this guy <laughs> no but i bought a bunch of video game stuff <laughs> Okay. And he he hooked me up, so he gave me this beer. It's a seven percent IPA, eighty IBU, 
serving temp 45 degrees Fahrenheit. I don't know why the fuck they say that, but <laughs> <laughs> but it has like a famous baseball player on it called Eddie Mune, I guess. I don't know. It says never heard not, of him. Yeah, no, neither man. have I. Uh Mune, yeah, M U N A Y, I think, number 33. I don't know. Maybe it's a made up person, but Eddie Money. Like <laughs> Oh yeah, maybe it is. <laughs> well, is it, but it have says, an Orioles uh, uniform on? No, he has the Union Craft Brewing Company logo on his hat. And he has a mustache and an afro. That his mustache is connected to his sideburns. It's pretty dope. That's awesome. I'll take a picture of it. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I need but it says that. 19 grand slams, 3,255 hits, 504 home runs. I mean, this guy sounds like he's he's played baseball, but maybe it's totally made up. I wonder if he owns the brewery or something. No, definitely not. I don't no? think so. Maybe. I don't know. No. <laughs> Either way, it, it's good. It's solid. It's if it didn't say IPA, I probably wouldn't consider it an IPA. Like to me, it tasted like a brown ale, hmm. um, like like a caramelly, darker roast hmm. of a beer. But it's good. It's solid. Like not hoppy in any sense. So, did the guy you met was he from like the Baltimore area? So how he got he's this from, beer? Or he's from Maryland. Yeah, I think oh, okay. uh, like Frederick, Maryland. Oh, okay. yeah, so right over the border. Okay, yeah. cool. Yeah, because I don't think I've ever seen that brewery, like, around here, so it must be, like, a no, yeah. smaller yeah. down there. He also gave me a can of Duclaw, uh unicorn farts or poop or something like that. Oh, God, <laughs> and, uh, I love Duclaw. Yeah, Duclaw is great. It was, uh, like, a sour pale ale um that supposedly had glitter in it like edible glitter but when oh. i cracked it open and poured it into a glass there was no glitter oh but, my uh, god it was still very tasty and i uh, i drank that last weekend uh at my sister's house and shared it with her dude but, uh, the, the glitter in drinks is a thing that's happening right now there is a, a yeah. brewery winery near us called springgate and they released glitter wine in the past Ooh. year and I was there. I was there one time with some girlfriends, and we were just like hang, hanging out. You know, like each of us was buying a bottle to split between all of us. And um, my one friend bought this glitter wine, and you could like swirl the glass, and it would look like it would look like a galaxy. Like it was just like spinning yeah, around, beautiful. and like it was crazy. But I was like, this cannot be healthy. I mean, like <laughs> it's wine, but like this this cannot be good <laughs> for anybody. Yeah. Uh, yes and no i i I see what you're saying you know but i i think they have it down to a science now and i think maybe he was sitting on this unicorn poop or farts or whatever from duclaw for too long that maybe the glitter dissolved or i didn't shake it up which you shouldn't ever shake beer up (laughs) right it's like that edible gold yeah exactly so like i could see wine working with the glitter a lot better because it's not carbonated also you know? can you just imagine every girl ever be like oh my god look they have glitter exactly wine. oh my god every girl exactly every girl. well every apparently girl. except for me because i was just like um okay cool like <laughs> painted <but> black <laughs> it was like a dark red it was like a dark yeah. red but it yeah, was yeah. good so good cool so All what right. are you drinking on kelly well, I was gonna let I was gonna let our guests go next because I want to hear from you, Kelly. <laughs> All right, fine. Um, I had hiding out in the back of my fridge one of my last Treehouse Brewing Company beers Ooh. that I was saving for a rainy day, and I figured, eh, it's a quarantine podcast, so I might as well use one. Um, so I've got a Treehouse Brewing Company uh, Julius, which is their like essentially their like flagship beer. Um, if I know I've talked about it before, but I did go to this brewery back in, it was like November, October, something like that. Um, yeah, that's getting old. I, yeah, my friends, well, it doesn't taste old, I'll tell you that. Okay, good. Um, my friends and I went up to, to Boston, and we stopped there on the way um, at the persistence of my one of my friends that was on the trip with us. And he said, oh, it'll be a quick stop, you know, no problem, whatever. All right, that's fine. We're all into beer, so we'll stop and get some beer. It was an hour and 45 minutes that we waited to get beer. 
Oh man. It, but the thing is that this place is so like hyped up and so like well known in the craft beer scene that people just come there and buy cases and cases and cases of beer and then like resell them in areas because they don't distribute to like other places around i guess so the only way you can get it is if you literally go there so that's why people were like it, people were reselling beer but uh it was wild just to see the amount of people that came out with like hundreds and hundreds and thousands probably of dollars in beer wow. just like and loading up their cars it was nuts but uh Jeez. yeah it's a super good it's a super good beer it is a uh, ipa it's 6.8 percent um and it's just it's just like a good like a good solid ipa it, it, there's nothing fancy about it but it's also not like too bitter or anything it's just like something you could sip on all day i feel like and and just really enjoy the taste so cool yeah nice. all right let's hear from you christopher what do you got so i will also hop on the ipa train because i am drinking what is called the wheezing juice um <laughs> yeah, it's called the wheezing juice it's got a pretty sweet can it is brewed uh here in grand haven michigan uh it's an in- it's an india pale ale and it is 6.5 uh, percent um just coming out of college, I am used to Natty Light for the last four years. Mm-hmm. So, so but when I would need to kind of get a little more classy and drink a craft beer, usually IPAs are my go-to. There was cool. a, there's a place here in Michigan called uh, the Ro- Rochester Mills, and they brewed the, actually their own beer right in-house at the restaurant. So my girlfriend and I would kind of go there on dates, and just IPAs are usually my go-to. I like them the best, but my college beer for the last four years was definitely Natty Light. And if you need a good cheap beer, Natty Light actually came out with Natter Days. I don't know if you no, guys have seen no. them. I, I we're, tried not, that. we're not promoting no, this. We I are not that. promoting Why? this on the podcast. <laughs> no. no. Uh, I'm going to sneak it in. Those are my favorite. All right. Tell me about this. What is it What's called again? Natter, Natter Days. It literally says on the can, for those who love strawberry lemonade and drinking beer. It's like, I hate it. It's, oh, it's delicious. Did you try it, Bo? Have you had no, it? No, I okay. just hate everything about it. I got it one time uh, because I was like, I should just try it because I do like fruity beers, but I was like, this is probably going to be terrible. <laughs> I think it is probably maybe number one in the top five slots of worst beers I've ever had. <laughs> oh, man. I'm sorry. I'm going to disagree yeah. with you. I, I don't even think I finished it. I wow. was like, this is not really – it was – I don't know. It just didn't taste right to me. There was like barely strawberry, but just enough to be like somebody set a strawberry next to this beer. It's like they whispered it strawberry into the can. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Somebody put yeah. They just sprayed like strawberry perfume around it, and then they were like, "Okay, here you go." No, but, it's definitely a cheap, crappy, like fruity beer. So like, once you're drinking IPA and craft stuff, and you go back to that, it's definitely not good. But it's a good college beer. Yeah, I, I guess. <laughs> I couldn't I do think, the natty I think days. once you turn 22, you're not going to ever look at your natty days. Honestly, you're going to be <laughs> I like, may or may not have gotten a, I may or may not have gotten a 30 rack today. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> These natty well, you days better are drink them before strong. Sunday. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah um, my cheap beer, which I've said before on the podcast is rolling rock. That's uh, my low end beer. And, and I love it. Like, so I understand. It's just, yeah. yeah. yeah it's, it's gross. Everybody has a low end beer that they <laughs> like. I, mine's Miller Lite. Like, I, it's my palate cleanser. I had a 36 yeah. pack that I've been going through on quarantine between my, <laughs> between my craft brewers that I have. Like, so I, I get it. And that was my go to in college was Miller Lite, too. Like, I mean, I had my nanny lights and whatever. Yeah. But I, I, if there was a Miller option, that was where I was. I like that much better. Yeah, and I'm fine with Miller Lite too. I I feel like that's a okay beer as well. How the much other... is a a 24 pack of Natty? So I think so. They, the Natter Days come in a 30 pack, and I got it at Wal and I got it at Walmart today for 14.98 plus tax and yeah. deposit. So God that's, that's bless America. So being in college, another one of my cheap beers was is Budweiser. I'm big on Budweiser right now, especially like the uh, 16 ounce aluminum cans are really good. But okay. being in college, okay, so I picked up this six pack of the wheezing juice today, and it was basically the same price of a 30 pack of Natty. So it's like 
just the the quantity to price ratio. Oh yeah, yeah. It's, that's it's, the it's ridiculous. <laughs> that's the only thing that keep kept me from kind of really exploring and exploring into the craft beer scene. Yeah, well that's great. Like I love that we're hearing the side of a college student that's also a gamer and collector <laughs> care about the prices of beer so much but is also hustling very hard when it comes to collecting and reselling and all that um so let's get into just talking to you about you know your history of gaming collecting and all that yeah um what what got you into gaming you know like what's your earliest memory like what was the game that spark the interest of being like i want to play more games and i want to collect more games and i want to make money off this too so as a kid i didn't really play a lot of video games i was more of kind of the go outside kid i was uh, a boy scout i played in the little league for uh baseball and also basketball so i was more going outside kid um the earliest gaming memories that i had was my grandma had a ps1 so when we'd go to her house I would play Spyro, and I believe it was 1080 Snowboarding. Those were the two go-to games on PS1, and I just remember playing those anytime I went to my grandma's house. Um, But then my fondest gaming, my actual, like, system that I put the most time into as a kid, and I think I enjoyed the most, was the Nintendo Wii. So I got it for Christmas one year, and that's just the system that really kind of started off gaming for me. And, like, the little that I did as a kid was the Wii. Just Wii Sports, Mario Kart, things like that were definitely my go-to. My favorite Wii game, though, is uh, The Bigs 2. It's a baseball game, and yeah. it's kind of, you. It's I guess so kind of explain, explain it kind of like like Mario Superstars Baseball, but like actual players and things like that. They're like, there's power-up swings and things like that. Overall, very well done okay. baseball game on the Wii. Hmm. Okay. Does that, does that support like, a, like the motion control, or are you yeah. like doing a nunchuck control nope so it supports the motion control and you also use the nunchuck uh, so like you swing to swing the bat you mm-hmm. throw to throw the pitch the ball and the nunchuck is just used for kind of uh fielding balls catching fly balls and rounding bases huh that's interesting i uh i i love baseball like when watching and, and things like that but i've never loved uh baseball video games so i've never delved into like any sports you know yeah game on any system when it when it comes to baseball really. i agree yeah it's cool I, to hear that that did that did that and on the wii yeah I'm, I'm kind of the opposite i think i would say sports games are kind of my go-to which i know mm-hmm. whenever i'm collecting and reselling now when i walk up on a pile of sports games i'm mad at the world but <laughs> when i'm playing them i i like it and i enjoy it and the bigs two really kind of sparked that interest for me with the wii that's cool. that's great yeah like i've you're shocking me in every aspect (laughs) possible because you're not like already like with this answer a you grew up i it's so weird to me because you're 10 years younger than me yeah right so i grew up on the super nintendo but also the original nintendo so to hear someone being like ps1 and we are my earliest memories i'm like whoa like that's crazy to think that way before um, i got into me. collecting i had no idea what a super nintendo was what an nes was what a sega genesis was i knew yeah so you you never knew what a cartridge based system was then yeah, no disc only man yep i that's yeah no wow. oh wow and then yeah and then most gamers and collectors will never say that their favorite game is a sports game. So that, I mean, to me, that's awesome. Like I love meeting someone that's not the cliche uh, square in the box, even though we're not squares in the box, but yeah. you know, like it's different. Like that's great. Awesome. Yeah, definitely. Definitely the Wii for me. So what was your grandma playing on the PS one? <laughs> she never really played it. It was just kind of in her uh, TV cabinet in the basement and it was just there for when the grandchildren and the cousins came over and she that's a good grandma did, she didn't have a lot yeah. of games she like I she had 1080 snowboarding Spyro and there was one other game I just can't put my mind to it but she probably had three or four games but in, like and I was younger at this time so like you can kind of figure out what you're doing in 1080 snowboarding you're just doing tricks and racking up points but Spyro it's just running around 
and like just kind of yeah. remember things. This just uh, reminded me. I remember I also as a kid had a Game Boy Color. So the Game Boy Color was the big handheld that I had as a kid. And I remember kind of driving home from grandma's house or doing whatever. And it's like, it wasn't a backlit screen. So you're leaning up against the window, trying to catch passing by streetlights to see your screen. And I'd play Mario world on that. But the game that I really played as a kid was dragon warrior, dragon warrior on the game boy color. And I, again, I had no idea what I was doing. I just loved running around the little monster guys following me. (laughs) That's, That's a great cool. game. I like yeah. I like to imagine that your grandma was just like after you all left or like, you know, you all went to bed or whatever, she sneaks downstairs, she pops in like Final Fantasy Seven and she's just grinding <laughs> through an RPG, like and then like your grandpa comes down, like, it's time to go to bed. She's like, I'm in yeah. the middle of something. Exactly. It's gonna have to wait. <laughs> <laughs> or she's playing the game that is there, ten eighty snowboard, and be like, Well, I need to get this ten eighty before I go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> i love it that's amazing yeah yeah that's that, cool that's great memories um yeah. what so what got you then those were your earliest memories yep. like what got you into collecting then so i've been collecting for about four years now and okay. resell- reselling for about five um i started off reselling by I don't condone this. Me and my buddy would go to GameStop after hours and dumpster dive there, get a (laughs) box full of stuff and walk back in their door the next day or two and trade it back into them. So fuck yeah. Good for you. So they threw away the system games. There's a GameStop right next door to another retro game store. And they would just throw away extra copies of games. They had controllers, systems, what you name it. They threw it out standees, things like that. So we'd I go, don't understand that. So we'd go back there, get a box of stuff together over a few days, and they'd trade it back into them. And whatever they wanted to take, we'd sell locally. Oh. That's, That's amazing. It. Stick it to the man. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so we don't no wonder why they're going under business. Oh, we don't do that anymore. But uh, so yeah, that started off my whole like reselling thing. I got a, a local buddy here who has been my friend for years throughout high school, and he also collects too. So it's kind of nice that we get to do stuff together that or garage selling facebook marketplace deals etc but after about a year of doing that and just kind of looking on facebook marketplace and going to garage sales i'm like this stuff actually has some value to it and it's i like to play it so for summer going into freshman year of college i started collecting just to kind of have some stuff with me at college um, and then also have a collection at home when i went to college uh, every school year i would bring my wii which you get people know also doubles as a GameCube, and I'd bring just exactly. your, cl- your classic party games. I'd bring Mario Party, Mario Kart, things like that to college, just so I had those games I could jam out with my roommates or friends on when we were bored or we had some time. Dude, that it sounds to the T exactly like my college experience. Really? <laughs> yep. We had a Wii and uh, my apartment and my friend's apartment, and basically between all of my friends, those were the two apartments that we would like frequent, basically. Um, and we had Mario Party, we had Mario Kart, we had Super Smash, and that was all you needed. Like exactly, you just set it up. You get your Wave Birds out, you get your Nunchucks out, whatever you need, and then you're good to go. And you know, there's either a your pregame game that you can mm-hmm. drink to, or just like it's Saturday and I have nothing to do, so let's just play like six hours of Mario Kart because my roommate and I would do that literally easy, all the time. <laughs> easy games that, yep. for the most part, that people have played before. And if the, I like the thing I like about my collection was I had my collection with me at college for two years, probably until it got too big. But my favorite thing about it would be when people would come take a look at it and they'd look at my shelves and be like, oh my God, I had this game as a kid. I haven't played it in forever. Can we play this? Or, oh, my God, I remember this. It just it was a great feeling for me to like know I had stuff that people were so sentimental to and they haven't even thought of in years. Right. Yeah, that's crazy. That's the that's the best feeling ever is like when you have someone over for the first time or what whenever and they see your collection and being a gamer or not a gamer and they look through it and they're like, oh, my gosh, like this is a game that I grew up on. Mm-hmm. It's, it's such a great feeling. And then it's like, oh, do you want to play this? You know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Or they're like, 
oh my god, this is so cool. I remember when I was a kid, my favorite game was blah, blah, blah. Do you have that? And I'm like, oh yeah, it's right here. And then they're like, wow, like, I can't believe you had that or whatever. And it's like, you know, like Mortal Kombat for the Super Nintendo <laughs> or something. And it's like, yeah. yeah, obviously, like, it's a staple or whatever. Sometimes it's like a weird game and I'm like, maybe I don't have that one. But it is a cool thing. And I, like, I can't imagine, like, being in college and taking this with me i mean i know mine's like you know bigger than i probably would have been able to afford back then but like yeah. to be able to take that with me i know like when i was in college i didn't really start collecting per se until after i had been buying games and stuff while i was in college so mm -hmm. i was technically collecting at that point but it wasn't like a serious thing so like i had i would bring my game boy with me i'd bring my ps2 and i'd bring my wii with me to college you know, my senior year, I think, was when I got the Wii. Yes. Yeah. I probably was at a good price point at that point. Um, but it was like we would sit down and be able to play games and stuff. And then, like, on a weekend when I didn't want to, you know, work on any work or anything or I had time or I had a break, in, you know, between classes, I could sit down and play a game. So, I, like, imagining having a full collection at your dispense, essentially, while in college is just, like, so mind-blowing to me because i would have never i would have never thought about it back then yeah and my collection is not huge according like uh compared to some other people like taking a look at my game i app real quick where i have everything logged i'm currently up to 825 games in my collection so it fits That's nicely pretty on pretty good it fits on it fits on the two bookshelves they're getting a little yeah. full but it fits on the two bookshelves and the thing i love about my collection is i've kept a log like since day one on like what I've spent and what I've made back and my collection has been completely free. It's paid for itself multiple times over throughout the time. Just so everything I own is completely free in my collection. That's awesome. I really wish that that's one thing I would have done when I started this whole thing, but I didn't really think I wasn't in that mindset when I started, you know, buying mm -hmm. more stuff and a lot of the stuff I already had from when I was a kid or whatever. So it was like, I didn't pay anything for those, but that's that's such a cool thing is that you had the thought to start that immediately when you started collecting yeah. so that's that's really cool i don't think a lot of people do that but no. i i definitely have mad respect for you for that <laughs> thank you do you do you think that you had that insight because of the era that you grew up in what do you that mean more people were collecting at the time what do you mean for me, like logging it monetary wise? Yeah. And like, just like keeping track of it and uh, seeing other people being like, oh, you know, this is worth this much, you know, like, yeah. let me hold on to it. Whereas like when Kelly and I grew up, you know, even though it was only 10 years prior to you or less, it was just like, oh, cardboard box, throw it out, you know, yeah. like. And like, that's how I, I think was as a things kid. have changed. And that's how everyone was as a kid. They get a new game, they rip into it, they throw out whatever, they don't keep the box for the system, and everybody wishes they could go back in time and keep that stuff. Um, from a collection logging standpoint, I just always wanted to keep the log so I can keep track of how many games I had and what I have. So if I'm out at a store or a garage sale or something like that, I can quickly check if I have something or not. Um, okay. But from a monetary standpoint, my girlfriend always would get on me and be like, why'd you spend a hundred dollars on this lot? And I'm like, well, the lot's worth 600 or whatever. So just more from there like a go. personal standpoint of making sure I wasn't spending too much on my collection for like stuff that some of this, like you're not going to play all your games. So for some of the stuff that's just going to sit on the shelf, not spending too much. And I love the aspect of just how I, how I get everything. I don't usually pay retail for really anything. And it just kind of, it's like a thing in the back of my head where if like, someone pays for a game and they get it for like $10 under retail. They think they got a great deal. Like I see in some Facebook groups or whatever, but on the flip side, I found snow bros at a garage sale for $3 and that's a $200 NES game. Yeah. Yeah. You got lucky boy. Yeah. 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 There's definitely <laughs> a lot of luck in, in that for sure. But there's also a lot of, you have to have a lot of hustle. And, and that's um, the thing. Yeah. That, that's the thing I always tell to my buddy. It's like the hustle. It's like when people get mad, if I like get a lot or get a good lot, I've even had people comment on my Instagram post saying like the lies people tell on this app about what they pick up. And it's like, no, it's not lies. Like 
I check Facebook Marketplace every 30 minutes. I go to garage sales every Saturday. I'm up at 6 30, 7 a.m. to go to garage sales. Like I put in the hustle to go and find the stuff. And the people that like get mad are the ones that just are on eBay pointing and clicking and having it show up at their doorstep. Yeah. No, you gotta yeah. you gotta throw in the the legwork and everything. And that's awesome that you do that because not a lot of people do. And um like I I get where you're coming from. Uh and Bo, I, I bet you do too. Um like neither of us are strangers to reselling. In fact, I made it essentially my second job. Um like I recently went and went in on a um a booth in an antique store. So because I was doing so well on eBay and selling on Instagram and locally and things like that, I thought, well, maybe I can save myself some time on like, you know, all the shipping bullshit mm-hmm. and, and put it in a place. And because also because my fiance was like, uh, there's all this stuff taking up all this room yeah. in our house. <laughs> so I was like, well, maybe I can get it somewhere, store it there and, you know, kind of put it there and forget about it and it'll make me money. And that's exactly what's happening. But I'm still up, you know, on the weekends when it's not quarantine, out there looking at yard sales, going to flea markets, like I'm on Facebook Marketplace and, you know, let go and offer up mm-hmm. and all that stuff every day, like multiple times a day, like looking for the next the next deal that I can turn into inventory there or I can turn into part of my collection. So yep. you got to be able to to have that drive and and that knowledge to know where to find stuff Mm -hmm. and like if you show up at a garage sale and you see some video games you have to know like is this worth it you know is is this madden 07 game worth the five dollars or should i pay three dollars for the snow bros like what's what's my better option here what am i gonna you know so yeah i i commend you for for the hustle for sure <laughs> that's, a, that's a great point uh, what you said about when you walk up to a garage sale and just having the knowledge because um yeah. I, like in my like when i'm packing packages or doing ebay listings like i listen to just like kind of video game things in the background people's recent pickups youtubers things like that i watch a guy on youtube who owns a game store so it's kind of just always listening and getting that knowledge so when you do walk up to a garage sale and you say hey do you have any video games and they bring you out a box of stuff most of the people who are just getting into kind of collecting and reselling are going to know to pick up your Mario's, your Donkey Kong's, your Zelda's, but you got to know those obscure titles and those obscure genres that you need to know to look for that you know are worth money. And so you're not passing on those up. And then also just having the negotiation skills to get it for the price that you want is a big thing. Yeah. that's. And I think, I think when it comes to like garage sales or, you know, even being at like a thrift store or whatever, and you're like, Hey, do you have any video games? And they actually have a box that isn't out or they do have a box that's out. It is all about negotiation skills and it's all, you know, how much for all of this without even looking, you know, like you you can take a quick glance at something and sort of know rough amount what it's worth. Or at least you should, if you've been in the game of, you know, buying and selling. Exactly. And, and, you know, if you see those GameCube titles, you're like, all right, cool. Like, I know that that's going for a lot right now. Oh, or I see SNES or N64 cards. Like, okay, that's going for a lot. Like, Sega Saturn, sure, absolutely. You know, like, so it's all about buying as much as you can for the lowest that you can. Exactly. Um, Mm-hmm. in hopes that you know you can add to your collection and sell and profit from you waking up earlier than everyone else yeah i would say knowledge is the biggest thing knowing what things are worth even you, you're never gonna not, you're not ever gonna know everything but just having just the knowledge to know what things are worth especially looking for certain genres like i know if i see rpgs or if i see horror titles those usually have a yep. little more value than other genres so just small things like that to keep in the back of your mind when you're going through a box of stuff yeah you uh saying hard hard genres reminded me of this loose disc uh pickup that i got through my wife's like old classmate um she brought over a bunch of loose discs someone that she went to high school with and you know my wife hit her up through facebook marketplace and about something else like a 3ds Mm -hmm. for sale and she's like what else do you have 
you know and she's like well i have a bunch of gamecube and ps2 games and i'm like yeah have her over have her come and bring everything (laughs) over like that sounds great um and she did and it was all loose and i was like oh fuck you know like this sucks and everything looks so scratched up and there were some wii games in there too but uh i'm looking at it and i see rule rule of rose and i was like oh oh here we go (laughs) so i immediately run to my kiosk room where i have my only ps2 hooked up into the into its uh kiosk Mm -hmm. and i put it in and it loads and i wait for a while and it's still playing and i'm like okay cool i'm like what do you want for this (laughs) you know and she's like well what do you want to give to me and i'm like fucking like i want to buy it all from you Mm -hmm. obviously you brought everything here there's probably like 40 games loose and stuff and i was like well a lot of these are messed up i'm not going to go through all of these to see if they work or not you know there are a few good titles in here that i'm interested in and i'm willing to take the risk to see if they work or not you know Mm -hmm. um what are you comfortable with and it was just back and forth what are you comfortable with i i I know me too because i never want to downplay anyone but i was like i'm comfortable with spending 80 bucks right now yeah on this lot and she was like that would make me so happy and And that's like awesome cool thank you that's the main thing that's the kind of thing i run into too when i'm at a garage sale and somebody brings out a box of games and say there is complete just rpgs and horror films it's a thousand dollar lot some people are gonna get mad at me for this but when i say how much and they say 20 bucks i'm giving them the 20 bucks like if if they say a price (laughs) and they're happy with it i'm giving them the money um i would even i I would even (laughs) i would even offer i would even offer 20 bucks for a lot like if they said how much would you pay i'd say 20 bucks if they seem happy with the 20 bucks they're getting stuff out of their house and i'm getting stuff that i want yeah and that's a great way to look at it too the, the, you know? the one thing that i'm kind of like skeptical like in your situation if, if it's someone you kind of know um like it's not someone that like my wife knew and she wanted to make sure that i wasn't ripping her yes off. so like i'll put on my personal facebook and be like hey i'm looking to sell game i'm looking to buy games and i'll kind of give a list and then like i had like my girlfriend's aunt hit me up so she brought over some games and it was nothing crazy but I, it's not wasn't like i'm not gonna rip off my girlfriend's aunt so that's when yeah, i'm exactly. that, that's when i get into hey I'll kind of explain that this stuff is worth this much, but I'll give you a 55, 60% of value here. Yeah, exactly. And that's nice. Yeah. That's good to be upfront. But like, I, I get what you're saying. Like I do the same thing. If, if somebody is like, okay, this is my asking price. I'm like, okay, that's how much money they want for it. And I'm going to give them that. It's not like I'm going to come at them and be like, Oh, well, yeah, that's great and all, but you could be getting this much. And it's like, then you're like, what's the point? Like, you're not going to get the deal then because they're going to be like, oh, well, then I'll take this elsewhere exactly. or, you know, like whatever. So, like, yeah, you can be like you could people can be like, yeah, you're being a dick. Yeah. But like if you don't do your research before selling something, that's on you. Like if you just want it out of your house or if you just want to unload something like whatever that's up to you like i could i don't know like i could sell like a whole box of like fine china or something for five bucks because i want it out of my house but yep. somebody's out there collecting china and they're like well that's three hundred dollars worth of china and i didn't exactly. look it up exactly I'm, I'm losing money so it's like it's kind of like a like i always say like do your research before you sell things like that's my biggest thing is do mm-hmm. your research do your research i can't say it enough like if you're gonna if you're gonna sell literally anything like make sure you're not you know putting yourself on a chopping block there on on, on losing money two minute like, ebay search it, it yep. takes two minutes to do a quick ebay search like everybody doesn't know everything about every subject but like on that yeah like you yeah. said if you're if you're selling china it's like you don't know anything about it and you just want it out of your house that's that's at garage sales too if i ask somebody if they have video games and they bring a box out of their basement that's been sitting there for 10 years that they haven't touched in 10 years and they're happy to get rid of it and i'm getting stuff i want it's a win-win yep yeah, yeah absolutely i agree yeah i uh I had a similar similar story. Um, so as I've been doing, you know, as I've been doing this this uh, antique booth recently, um, my parents have never been into video games or anything. Never been really into my collection. They're always like, oh, 
it kind of looks like a waste of money kind of thing, you know, or whatever. Or you're not outside or something. I don't know. Something parents you're would say. You're not outside. <laughs> something parents <laughs> would say. You're not exercising. You're not eating enough broccoli. Um, yeah. And I think as as the years have gone on, because I, I would say I've probably been doing reselling for about five years now, um, they're more like a like interested like that i got to this point where i was successful enough in selling locally selling yep. on ebay selling on instagram that i would gonna venture into brick and mortar and they were like well so how's it doing and then i'll tell them and it's going great you know whatever and they'll ask me like what are you selling the best mm -hmm. and i'll be like well you know right now it, it's you know vintage toys i've been buying a lot of that's been selling great and, and video games is always one of my biggest sellers because my mom was always like well if i can help you find anything let me know because now that I have this brick and mortar spot and I was like, well, you know, if you ever have any of your friends, because her friends are at the age, you know, where all their kids have moved out of the house and people are downsizing and whatever. I was like, if anybody ever is like, I've got a box of video games or whatever, you know, like, let me know. I take a look at it, whatever. So she had one of her friends a couple months ago contact her and say, I have a box of my son's video games. You know, does your daughter want it? She can have it like just free like you can just have it and i'm like well yeah i'll absolutely take it whatever it is like it's video games i'll take it yep i didn't even know what it was and she shows up at my house my mom shows up at my house with this box and it's a playstation 2 an xbox 360 and like you know like 10 to 20 games for each now, okay controllers whatever everything works cool and i'm flipping through the games and i like look at the box and initially i'm like oh that's a lot of sports titles which Christopher, I'm sure you're like, yes. But I'm like, oh. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, that's a lot of sports titles. But then here we are at the beginning of, this is like the beginning of the, the COVID-19 stuff. Mm -hmm. And I'm looking on, like, I'm doing my research. I'm on eBay. I'm on price charting. I'm on game value now, whatever. I'm on GameStop. I'm looking at all the values that people are, are getting. And I'm starting to see, I'm like, I'm getting down and I'm like, oh, okay. Because I, I could see, like, there's a couple PS2 titles. You got SpongeBob, Bikini, um, Battle, Battle for Bikini Bottom. Yep. You know, that's yep. a good title. You know, I was like, okay, well, there's at least, you know, like 20 bucks there. And then I keep going and keep going. And then I get to, um, like, I know NCAA 14 football was the big one. Yep. That's the, like, $100 one. And then I was like, here's eight. Here's 11. I was like, oh, we'll see what I can get for this. I went on and I was pleasantly surprised to find that the earlier ones are still worth a decent amount like i sold one of them for like 60 bucks and it was like this is great i got this for free and like my mom contacts me a couple days later and she's like so how did how did that you know how'd that work out for you or whatever and i was like great i've already sold half of it and i've already made 200 bucks and she nice. was like what <laughs> and i was like yeah like this is it's lucrative like you know and she's like that's insane like i had she had no idea that like you could make this kind of money on these on these things if you know what you're doing, basically. My parents, and you know how to ask. My parents were the same way. When I first started collecting, my dad was like, why is this crap in my house? Why are you bringing home a van full of stuff from garage sales? Like, people are throwing this out. Nobody wants it. That kind of stuff. But, like, once he started to see, like, okay, I'm actually selling this. Okay, I'm actually taking 10 packages to the post office a day. If people want it, he kind of let up a little bit. And he's a delivery driver. So he'll be out doing his route and he'll call me like, hey, I'm at a garage sale and they have these games. Are you interested? And he'll kind of read me off the titles or whatever. So he does that every once in a while. And then like you were talking, don't be ashamed. Like if you're collecting to let your friends and family know you're collecting connections are going to be one of your biggest things. Because like you oh, said, yeah. your mom's friend hit her up and said, hey, does your daughter want these? Let your friends and family know you collect because they don't think yep. the stuff is probably worth anything, but they just have a box of stuff in their basement that they forgot about or don't know what to do with, and they're just looking to get rid of it. And they'd be more than willing to give it to somebody that they know. So let your friends and family know that you collect. It's only going to lead to good things. Yeah, and, and your coworkers. Yes. Yeah, and even if you're not going to get it for free or whatever, you can still, you know, like you said, level with them. Be like, I'll give you 50, 60 percent of value, you know, kind mm -hmm. of thing. Yeah, I just moved to a different location with my job. We uh, moved from a salvage yard. I work at a, a salvage yard selling uh, used car parts and stuff, mainly on eBay. But um, we moved the whole operation from the yard to a warehouse. So now I'm manager of the shipping area and stuff. And now I'm with 
other people that are working in the same room with me. And it's nice because I'm able to talk to people uh, for the first time <laughs> at my job. <laughs> and so I've been talking about video games a lot. And I was telling this one guy, you know, about video game prices and like pickups that I'm about to do and that I just got. And he's like astonished on like how much things are worth. I'm like, yo, like video games are up there right now in the market. Like it keeps rising. It's not going down. Um, so that prompted him to look through, I guess, his basement or attic. And he found a bunch of stuff and came back today being like, yo, I found a bunch of GameCube games that I didn't know I had. I'm like, oh, that's great. Like what GameCube games do you have? Like. Are they loose discs or are they with the case? And he's like, loose discs. He's like, oh, no, maybe they're not GameCube. And I was like, what do you mean? He's like, they're cartridges. I'm like, are they round cartridges? And he's like, yeah. I'm like, oh, you got N64 games then. They're still worth a lot. Like, yeah. And oh. I'm like, what do you got? And he's like, I don't even know. I'm like, bring them in. <laughs> right <now." laughs> so hopefully he does. But I was like, you know, even if you don't want to sell them, like I'm down to praise them for yeah, you. Yeah, definitely. And then, and then give you a price, a, like a reasonable price for them if you do want to sell them. And if not, that's fine, you know. But like he was like, like being astonished that I sell stuff. Like besides like doing my daily job mm -hmm. that I do, that I'm all also have this side hustle of buying and selling video games too. He was like, oh, that's great that you're doing extracurricular activities in that sense you know and i'm like yeah like that's the only way that i'm able to support my habit of buying video games is yeah. that i sell video games exactly. too you know yeah. like it's a give and take situation plus i'm limited on room just like almost everyone yeah. is and that's a big thing is like you only have so much room so really what what's a reason to collect anything for is a, you, you either love that game or B, you feel like that game's going to go up in price. Mm -hmm. So you want to hold on to it longer, you know? And I guess that's the only reason. Or C, you want to go for a full collection, which only so many people have that much room for for that type of collecting. That's exactly my you know? thing. So with my collection, like I said, I'm up to 825 games. And it's Quality over quantity. I have, I know I said I was big on, big on sports games earlier, but I have very few sports games in my collection, only the ones that are actually like sentimental to me. But I am going for two full sets, and it's two of the, or I guess you can call it four full sets. But so I'm going for the N64, which is a small set, 296. I'm going for the Wii U, which is also a small set, which is like 166, somewhere around that range. I'm going for Virtual Boy, which is like 14. And then mm -hmm. that end of it is pricey. <laughs> it, the end of it is pricey. And I found all those in the wild. I'm not buying any on eBay. So when I find Jack Bros at a garage sale, I'll do the happy dance. And then, that's the only game I want from Virtual <laughs> Boy. And then I am, and I'm going for Nintendo Power. All right. Cool. I sold a, a, or I traded a bunch of Nintendo Power over 100 magazines. And, you oh, I got from I you, Kelly. You? <laughs> <laughs> How the turntables have turned. <laughs> How the turntables have turned. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's funny how that stuff works around, though. Like, you know, honestly, it's crazy. It's funny, like, that, you know, you and I are in close proximity, so it's easy to, you know, trade in and out all the time. And, like, you yeah. know, some of my other friends that are local trade back and forth or whatever. But, like, you know, so much stuff I feel like I send out to Instagram people and I'll be like, you know they'll play it or whatever they'll collect it and i'm like well someday then they're gonna turn around and, and want to mm -hmm. sell it or whatever i don't yeah i don't care you know quick question about instagram i know yeah. kelly yeah. you sell on instagram a lot do you feel i don't know about uh, you uh bo um do you feel like 90 percent of your packages go to california yes so, um <laughs> well go ahead I was going to yeah, say, so, like, 90 is an over-exaggeration, but I feel like a lot of my packages go to California, and I've been using Pirate Ship. I don't know if you guys use that, but I've been using Pirate Ship for about two, three months now, and they have a map of the U.S. on there where they can tell you, um, like, kind of the percentage by state of where your packages are going to, and I ship a good deal. I probably ship 30 to 40 packages a week, 
And mm-hmm. I just looked today and th- like 30% of my packages go to California, which from Michigan is an expensive ship. Oh yeah. I was going to, yeah. uh, um, selling on Instagram is, God, I don't know how long I've been selling on there. Um, it's probably been like two or three years. You but actually when I turned started- me on. You turned me on yeah. Instagram. I was, I was yeah. you, you were, you were one, one of the one of my first, first ones. Yep, yeah. you were, I was one of, you were one of the first people I followed on my personal account and bought from you. <laughs> and then I ended up starting my koozie.retro games uh Instagram yeah. off of that. Yeah, I remember Aww. you were you he has been one of he's one of the OGs. Yeah, there's a, a lot of people who were uh, I, I will say valued customers because I don't know how else to say that. Um but like my custies. My my, my custies. <laughs> my crusty custies. <laughs> um no value I, customer is a nice way to say it, yes <laughs> <laughs> no i uh i i started doing it and it was like i, I guess to be like three years ago at least and i remember starting it and, and like picking stuff up it was when i was like you know starting to sell some stuff that i would find at garage sales and things like that and i remember my fiance being like what, what are you doing and then like then he'd see me working for two hours mm-hmm. in the basement, packing stuff and selling stuff. And then he'd be like, well, how much money are you making? I'll tell him. And he'd be like, well, shit. Like, yeah. And then he's also been like a huge force behind that because he, you know, saw from what I was doing on Instagram and, and eBay. And he was a huge force to be like, yeah, you know what you're doing. Like, go go out into the world and do this. Like, you make enough money doing this, like, with the the product that you have, like, you need to do this more like he was like yep. telling other people that he, we know that like you know like yeah this is super profitable like she knows what she's doing like and then it was kind of just like a, a push from there to go from virtual to to real life but instagram was definitely like i i guess like technically ebay and then instagram you know i saw so many people selling stuff on there i was like well why not like you know i i i can't imagine what it would have been like if i had if i had the the community of instagram you know when i was in college and had the time and the energy to go out and and do way more than i'm doing now but like the the community that we have there it's it's very very receptive to people just being like this is what i've got this is what i'm asking and they'll be like yeah done i love the instagram yeah it's honest people mostly i there are always some mostly, bad yeah. eggs but the people i've dealt with are honest yes and and they're upfront and like they're quick that's the other thing is like that's nobody wants thing. to wait around for no. somebody to pay me yes. and you can sit there on ebay and sell something and they won't pay for like three days and you're like messaging them on ebay I like no oh, man what's going on and then you're like ghost town central and you're like i guess i'm canceling this order because i'm not waiting yeah. five business days for yep. you to respond or pay so like the people on Instagram, it's like I give them like a twenty four hour window within like five minutes. Like ninety five percent of the people have paid because yep. they want this stuff. They trust you know other people who are are in the community with them. Like they know. And like, you're probably giving it to them at a lower price yes. than eBay. You don't have to right, do it with exactly. the eBay fees. Yes, that's why. Yeah, I usually shave off a little bit from from eBay, and like it's like you know as long as I can cover my shipping and like you know not lose money on on the product i bought yep. essentially like I'll, I'll give it to you for a deal i'm i'm very flexible with people on instagram like you know we're all in the same boat we're all collecting like we all have goals we all have things that we want to get we all have grails like yep. let's make it happen for each other so yeah definitely instagram selling has been probably one of the better experiences as far as like selling goes instagram so instagram for me has been one of my favorite selling platforms. I'm going to get into another one in a minute, but my favorite thing about Instagram is when you sell on eBay, person buys, you ship it off basically into air. You never hear from them again. You never see from them again, unless they're a repeat customer and they leave you feedback. You're generic. They already have the feedback like to submit in the box. It's the same for every buyer. Thank you. Great purchase. Great eBay. But with Instagram, you know what I get what with eBay sales, not what? to <clears throat> bump in, but I always put a precisely, uh, podcast sticker and with all my video nice. game sales and, Love then the I write, and I write a hand note saying thank you enjoy the game I do that too I put I my wife 
yeah, my wife will be like, say, listen to the podcast. I'm like, well, isn't it a given? She's like, not really. Like, even though it says precisely podcasts with the Instagram like handle at the bottom right corner, like just say, listen to the podcast. And the first one that I did that, a guy messages me back after he received the package of whatever game it was. And he was like, is this yours? And I'm like, is it mine? What? And he's like, your podcast. And I was like, yeah. And he's like, I'm going to listen to it now. And I was like, <laughs> thanks. I do the it's same like, exact cool. thing. I write on a, yeah. I got a stack of common Pokemon cards. I write on the Pokemon card in Sharpie. Cause it just kind of goes along with the video game theme. Hey, thank you for yeah. your purchase. I hope you enjoy. I hope you're staying safe. Follow my Instagram for more retro game content, koozie.retro.games. I do that for all my eBay packages. But back to what I was getting about, about Instagram was when you ship something to somebody, they then post it on their feed or they send you a message. Hey, I got the package. Thank you. It means a lot. Like I've been meaning to add this collection. Just like the, you really feel when the person gets the package, you can tell that they enjoyed it. So that just makes it like more beneficial to me than just basically sending it into thin air on eBay. Mm-hmm. I and uh, I don't know if either of you guys are on Discord at all. Are you? We uh... Uh, we have a Discord channel, actually, for Precisely. So if you go to patreon.com slash Precisely <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> plug, plug, and plug, plug, uh, plug. give us a dollar a month, you can join that Discord channel. But, yeah, right now only it's Kelly and me. Join that. <laughs> Um, but so I'm in I'm in two I'm in I'm in two retro gaming discords and we, okay. I'm a moderator in both and the one has about I would say 250 members and the other one is over a thousand oh. but we allow buy sell trade in there and I've been I don't know if you guys have maybe Kelly's noticed uh, or YouTube Bo but I've kind of slowed my sales on Instagram and I'm mm-hmm. posting like strictly in discord just from kind of a time perspective um, on Instagram it kind of takes a little bit of time to kind of like take a picture write a caption, upload it. It just takes a little bit of time. Discord yeah. is so much faster to where I just snap a picture and write $7 shipped. And it just kind of increases that speed for me. And like like you said, Kelly, people like to get paid right away. You don't want to be waiting three, four days, especially when you're selling stuff. You want the stuff out of your house. You don't want to be sitting on inventory. So selling in Discord or even on Instagram, it's so fast. And just the community of people is amazing. And you feel like people are really enjoying what they're getting from you. Oh, hmm. yeah, for sure. Um, funny that you mentioned that, Bo, about the stickers, though, because I've been sending the stickers and the stuff I sell on Instagram. <laughs> Good. Good. You so, should. Also, I'm going to need some more, so... That's fine. We're <laughs> probably going to have to put in another order Let's soon, another but that's order. fine. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, no, I, I think the personal touch is super cool, and uh, I don't I don't put it into eBay um, because again, like you said, Christopher, it's like sending it into air. Like, I don't feel that personal connection when I send it off to eBay. It's just like some person, especially recently, some person with zero feedback is buying mm-hmm. this game. Like, toodaloo, I'll see you never. Yep. And and I'll get feedback and be, all right, whatever. But if I sell my game on Instagram, I know it's going to Bo's game room and it's he's gonna put it in his collection which i've seen a picture of and he's going for um i don't know a full set of virtual boy games yay so well, you know like no i'm virtual boy games well, I, yes. I'm just, yeah all right yeah yeah go with the 14, flow, man though. go with the flow yes but so, all right i'm going with it <laughs> So then I know that I've now contributed this copy of Jack Bros that I got at a garage sale for a dollar <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> to Bo's uh, virtual boy collection that he's been working on for the past six months. And that was the last game he needed. And now it's complete. Yay. We can all celebrate. Yep. And I helped that happen. You know, like it's just a like, way more personal experience. And, you know, everybody that you're working with. And, you know, like, like I said, a lot of these people that I've met through instagram like i've met through selling and stuff too mm-hmm. and i have you know followed them at, because i've been buying selling trading with them for years you know exactly. so it's super cool that like now you know you and i like i met you selling stuff and now here we are recording a podcast together like it's just like cool little things in the world that come together so i, I definitely love selling on instagram i think it's way more um i guess it's just Personal. way more, yeah, yes. and 
it, it's it, it's more refreshing. And you do sell a little bit lower. So some people might be scared away. Oh, I can sell more on eBay. Why would I sell on Instagram? But I like the feeling of hooking somebody up and you're not dealing with yeah. the 10% in, in eBay fees. And I would say from me personally, 95% of people pay friends and family on PayPal. So you're not dealing with the 2.9% fees in PayPal. So by selling on Instagram or in Discord, you're automatically automatically alleviating 13% in fees. Yep. Yeah. All right. So I'm actually on the opposite page of both of you guys. All right. Let's I... hear your wrong opinion. <laughs> <laughs> wrong opinion? Okay. Um, it's just my opinion. I mean, yeah, there's no argument ahead. about it. But uh, I sell a lot on eBay, and I post a lot on eBay, and it – the reason why I use eBay is because of buyer and seller protection. Mm -hmm. um, also because I don't want to flood my Instagram with a bunch of buy and sell posts. I, I guess I care too much about what I post on Instagram. Um, you have an aesthetic. Feed... Yeah. I it's do a have nice an Instagram page. Thank you. I, I, like I, I just like, throw my stuff I, on the ground and hope I don't get my toe in the picture. <laughs> yeah, right. Ooh, and, and then you I, could charge extra for foot pictures. <laughs> no, and, and then when I get my toes in the picture, uh, I get a bunch of horny old men being like, I'll pay you $9,000 for more feet pick. And I'm like, all right, give me $9,000, and I will gladly give you as many feet, pick, feet picks that you want. Oh my They're God, like, well, yeah. you got to give me 30 bucks first. And I'm like, all right, now it's going to cost you a hundred dollars. This first. actually happened. And then, and then, yes, it has actually. <laughs> like last last month, uh, when I posted my first, not first, but most second to most recent bathtub picture with my feet. <laughs> and this, <laughs> and this, the, yeah, dude, mad people DM me being like, yo. No. Here's no, a thousand didn't. bucks. Here's nine thousand. Yes, no. yes. You can read the comments. <laughs> oh God, no. And so I told my wife this, and my wife is like, "Uh, yeah, you should hit them up." And I'm like, "I don't know what the fuck to say." And she's like, "It's nine thousand dollars, Bo. Fucking them talk to them. Off. Pay that yeah, mortgage and I'm like, off." I'm like, "Okay, well, here's my phone. You message them." But before that, I actually hit up my buddy John, who's a gay man uh the lone wolf on instagram he's an awesome guy that i actually met at uh too many games last year and he's like yeah nine thousand dollars definitely get that like hustle them feet and i'm like all right <laughs> i don't even know if i've ever looked at your feet are your feet that like good looking my feet are no my feet are disgusting kelly okay. Yeah, I was gonna say I don't know if I've ever like consciously looked at your feet and be like, you don't, you don't want to, like. yeah, you don't want to even zoom in. I don't know, if <laughs> <laughs> they're discussing nine k at nine k. Either yeah, way, anyway. yeah. So I I messaged a guy back about the nine k, and he's like, "Well, before I trust you, baby, you got to give me thirty bucks through Cash App." I was like, "Bitch, before I trust you, you got to give me a hundred dollars." <laughs> And he, he was like, all right, I'll drop it to 20. I'm like, you just went up to 200. <laughs> so pay up, motherfucker. And he stopped contacting me. So it was a scam. You yeah. Know, like, whatever. <laughs> it, <laughs> it's besides the point. So thankful. The point, is, the point is, is that my wife wanted to pimp me out. <laughs> to, okay, look. For, <laughs> for my feed pictures, yes. <laughs> but no, I, I do like selling on eBay because it you are just – going into the air um you're not people aren't judging i feel like i judge a lot of people that sell on instagram and not necessarily you kelly and not necessarily you chris because you guys have your own like pages for that kelly especially you yeah. like it's not on your main page you don't want to clutter your feed i, I get that and that's I why i did that so once i sell something or I, once yeah once i sell something i delete the post that's just how I personally do it. I know Kelly, yeah. you have your separate page specifically for claim sales. But the same thing when I do, when I sell something, I archive it on my post. So if I ever need to go back and look at it, I can. Ooh. You know, like for posterity's sake. Yeah. <laughs> oh no. Oh. Yeah. Ar archiving yeah. is a good idea. Same, same thing. Though. Yeah, archiving is a great idea because, like, so the only game that I actually sold on Instagram without a raffle, right? I was drunk one night. I was like, I got this fucking expensive ass N64 game. 
I've had it on eBay for I think 220 bucks. What is it called? Sunt Racer. Oh yeah. 64 or something or whatever. Mm-hmm. I don't know what it is. Dumbass game. Yeah, Sunt Racer. I got it for fairly cheap, actually through an Instagram sale, buying something else and throwing that in with it. So I got I both these that. things for. You remember? Oh yes, yes. I, I actually hit you did up about it, or you. we were talking about it over something. I, yeah, I remember I that. Think, Yes, yeah. I, I was contacting you about that. I, forgot I remember about you that. bought um, it off. Yeah, okay. I remember the conversation. Yeah, now. yep. Um, and I was like, weary about it because yep. I was like, this is too good of a deal right now, you know, and he's not giving me tracking. He's not hitting me back. And you're like, just be patient. Yep. I'm like, okay. <laughs> All right. Thanks. You know, I think it was like you hit me there. for like 12 reason. hours. <laughs> yeah. So either way, like, didn't even play the game. I was like, fuck it. Like, I'm just going to sell this so i can keep this one thing for free that i bought um so it didn't sell on ebay for like two months or a month and i got a little impatient i was like i'm just going to throw it up on instagram i think i said like 190 shipped right now or 200 and one guy messaged me being like i'll give you 180 and i was like i gotta do 190 and he's like 187 and i'm like all right it's yours whatever like that's fine that was the only thing I've ever like sold directly, I think, on Instagram, uh, besides raffles. And raffles, I'm so like hit and miss with because I don't want to overload my page with them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, even though I have these great things for sale, I don't want to be that guy because I feel like people hate it so much. Yeah. So I don't know if you guys want to get into that topic, but how do yeah, you guys sure. feel? Do how do you guys feel about the raffles on Instagram? Because I just ran one today. And I filled the I top. See that. I filled the top loader raffle in an hour. Yeah, that was a good. Uh, that was a good raffle. And if I didn't just get one recently, I would have joined in because I needed a top loader. What was it? It was a, it it was a top, top loader. Just a, a, NES. NES top loader. Okay. What? How much uh, spots and how so much? So it was came with cords and controller, and I did ten spots at four or uh, ten dollar per spots at fourteen spots. Okay. Was it the dog bone controller? No, I actually kept the dog bone cl- controller for my collection. So when it comes to raffles, I guess it's known that you can get a little more if you're doing a raffle, and that's why most people do it. But I don't mm-hmm. overdo it. Like I would see some people doing like this. I would not be surprised if I saw somebody doing ten dollar per spot at twenty two spots for this top loader, and people would yeah. fill it. And I personally don't join in a lot of raffles because I'm not a gambling man. No. But, I mean, they're good every... I, I do them every once in a while, and I know there's a lot of stigma around them right now on Instagram, but if they're filling and you can get what you're asking, I would say, why not? Yeah. Yes. Um. Whenever I do raffles, I try to keep it around the price that it's worth, mm-hmm. Um, because that way it does fill. I, I've had to close a lot of raffles where people just aren't interested enough, you know? Where I'm just like, all right, fuck it. I got three people, but I don't ever collect money until it's filled or close to being yep. filled. Mm-hmm. Um, so that way I can just cancel the raffle, like close it out and be like, hey, guys, sorry. Like, I didn't get money from you anyway, yep. so it's fine. Um, but another question. So it just had two NES controllers nope, or just, just one? Uh, NES top loader, one regular controller, power pack, and AV cable or RF mm-hmm. cable. Okay. Uh, did it have the RCA mod? No. Okay. So I have one that has the RCA mod, so that's going. That's a little. Yeah, that would go for. But I filled it ten dollars per spot, fourteen spots in uh, an hour. So I'll I'll run it tonight after this uh, podcast. On like I said, I just go on. I go on random dot org. I do the third click. I go live on Instagram and run it, so people know it's legitimate because I'm live, and that's just how I do it. And I mean, it's gonna cost me. $13 Thirteen dollars to ship out or whatever in a medium flat rate box, and somebody's gonna exactly somebody's gonna win it for ten or twenty bucks, and they feel really happy about it. And if it's if it's failing, like why not do it? And now I don't like the people who are overdoing it and maybe doing three raffles a day and like a, it's a, ridiculous a forty dollar yeah. game valuing it like eighty or whatever. But I mean, if like you said, if people are willing to spend their money and on the spots and it's constantly filling, how can you turn that down? Yeah, I I agree. As long as you're an honest person about it, though, yes. uh, I don't see any problem with it. And as long as you're shipping things out pronto, yep. you know, like the year 
you're acting like this is your job. If it is your job or not your job, you know, like you're still treating it as the customer comes. Exactly. First, you know, yeah, that's all that matters then. And with all my raffles, I made sure that that shipping tracking number came out the next morning exactly. right before I went to work, I go you know, and I would, I would contact my boss the night before being like, Hey, I'm going to be coming in a, a few minutes late because I got to be at the USPS station at 8 AM. As soon as they wake up, as soon as they open their doors, as soon as the post to, office wakes up, yeah, yeah. you know, <laughs> it opens its as eyes, as I'm a little eel, you know, eel. what's funny though, is that the Lemoyne post office, they'll be there and I'll be right at the door and they'll look at me like at their desk and they won't open it until it's 801 no <laughs> matter what wow yeah oh. and i'm just like you motherfuckers like you are not filing papers right now <laughs> like you see me right here i got one package that needs to go out come on now but yeah, so with the raffles yeah way. i go i go lie like raffles are the one thing where people want to know you're legitimate with claim sale it's okay they can do kind of goods and services but you don't do that during raffles um i go live I even post the that I printed the shipping label on my story and it goes out. And I mean, when the person kind of posts on their story that they get it, I repost that on my story. Um, yeah, exactly. One thing that I've been doing with shipping, and I don't know if you guys do it, was I've been doing a USPS is uh, pickups. So I just mm -hmm. go on USPS.com, schedule a pickup, and they pick it up right from my doorstep when they come and drop off the mail uh, during the day. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah. I, uh, I work in the shipping department uh, for used car parts with my business. Mm -hmm. So I have a giant bin always that, you know, on a Monday I can be bringing in five packages from sales from eBay or whatever. Like today I sold uh, five PS one army army men games with three manuals or mm -hmm. guidebooks like who needs the guidebooks for army men for PS one? I don't know, but uh, <laughs> it, it it was off this PlayStation lot that I I bought a couple weeks ago, and finally it sold. So I'll be doing a media mail uh, package and putting it in the post bin That's so nice. for work. But what's also nice about my job is that I can use my boss is an amazing person, a friend that I grew up with, um, but he has great connections with FedEx right now that I can ship through FedEx and literally anywhere like to California up to like 10 pounds is like $10 wow. and 45 cents. That's, that's nice. Yeah. yeah. That's so clutch. Yeah. Shipping prices so just clutch. keep, keep going up. Insane. And if people, so, if people don't know, you can use a uh, paypal.com slash ship label slash create yes. to print discount shipping labels or PayPal was kind of giving me a little bit of trouble recently. It was giving me kind of error messages. I don't know if they fixed it, but I've been using pirateship.com, and that also gives you discounted shipping rates. And I like to use okay. Pirate Ship for boxes that aren't priority mail, just like your normal brown box that you're shipping somewhere, because it calculates it on like a cubic rate. So it's usually cheaper than uh, doing PayPal because there's different zones. They do it by cubic rate. It's really weird, but if it's saving me money, I like it. I gotta look into yeah. that. I've heard a lot of things about pirate ship, it's, and it's, um, I use the sh the PayPal yep. ship, and uh, that's what I've been doing for years, and it's never given me any trouble or anything. But uh, yeah, I've heard good things about pirate ship, so I gotta, I definitely have to check it definitely. out. Definitely, it's it's um, it's great, and like it, they you have the little reports tab where it tells you where your packages are going, which is also like cool. Just kind of see like, okay, I'm shipping to this state the most or whatever, and it's it. I love the website. I've been using, and it auto fills addresses too so kelly if i ship to you say oh, like today so nice. and if i go to ship to you next week if i type in like kel for kelly it'll autofill your your address oh that's so good because like you know we said before i have a lot of repeat customers yep. on instagram and i'm like i know like your i basically like memorize <laughs> like three three fourths of your address yes. essentially like i'll know that it's going to this state and maybe this street and uh that's it yep. but like It'd be so nice to have a the autofill. Definitely, uh, it's, it just saves time when you're. I know you do a lot of packages, so it just saves that couple seconds per package, but it, it adds up over time. Yeah. Um. So I was gonna circle back onto the the raffles and give my two cents because I literally never run a raffle on Instagram, and I sell a lot on there, which I don't know if that's surprising or not, but um, 
I've never run a raffle just because I feel like, uh, I don't know. I, I don't know if it's going to do well, you know, like, I don't know if that's what people want in a raffle. I don't know if, you know, we talked about how people get upset with raffle prices sometimes. I don't know if somebody would get upset that I'm asking that much for a raffle or whatever, you know, if they feel like it should be more or less or whatever they feel like. I just feel like it has too many variabilities where people could get, you know, mad about it. Whereas like when I do a claim sale and somebody writes claim and they're the first person to write it. Yeah. Maybe or they're 30 minutes ahead of somebody else. They have the first claim. Like that's, that's the person, like there's no disputing it. Whereas the raffle, it's like, you know, you all have a chance and then Mm -hmm. somebody's going to get butthurt about losing. And it's like, well, I I don't know what to tell you. Like, (laughs) so that's, I think that's like mostly what keeps me from doing it. And also it's like, I don't, I don't know who wants a like who wants what raffle. Like I have some pricier things right now. Like I don't know if people would want that on a raffle or not, or you know whatever. Like so, it's just weird to. You just gotta go I for just, it. Just yeah, go for I've it. Never, it. Never done it. I just I don't know, and I also am super picky about which raffles I do join because. Bo, I know you tag me in a lot of stuff, like, you know, when it comes to, like, giveaways or I whatever. I just tag you into everything. No, I know, <laughs> and I respect that yeah. because I do that to you, too, whenever I see something I want. Because, you know, we have that friendship where we can be like, we're yeah. just using your tag for the entry. Um, but, like, uh, I'm really particular about what I enter. So, like, you could be like, we're having a giveaway for this copy of uh, Super Mario RPG. And I'd be like, oh, I don't really need that. So I'm not going to yeah. enter. But good luck um i'm the opposite i i enter to enter and if i win it i'll resell it (laughs) yeah i've thought about that but i'm just like i don't want to waste you know like the high the probability of me losing is high i'm like i don't want to waste i'm not a gambler i'm not that's not me i get i get like i get mad when i I I was talking mad when i go I when I go to the casino and spend twenty dollars, yeah, like, I could have bought. I'm the exact thing. same way. I was I was talking from a like giveaway. I'll enter every giveaway, but raffles. Oh I'm, yeah, giveaway. I'm, I'm yeah. very. I've entered very few raffles, and usually it's like the five dollar and under spots are the ones I'm I'm entering. I also feel well, like we actually we oh, talk segue. about giveaways. Segue. Yeah, real quick, Ooh. talking about giveaways. This would be a good time to. Uh, put out our secret code for our giveaway which is a mystery box of a bunch of games 100 plus dollars worth of video games which you're welcome to enter chris if you want to um but either way (laughs) i'm gonna actually i don't know if you can enter it because i'm gonna have you say the code word whatever the code word comes in your head you say it whatever code word comes in my head i'm saying it yeah just think of anything all right. Anything. You ready? And then, yes, we're ready. Brazil. Brazil. All right. So Brazil is a code word that you got to DM us at Precisely Podcast uh, for your third entry for our giveaway. We'll have one more on our 50th episode of Precisely. Wow. Um, yeah. Exciting stuff. But yeah, Brazil. Thank you, Chris. No problem. All right. Let's go back to it. Do we remember what we were talking about? I was talking about raffle. Okay. Um, but uh, yeah, so the with entering giveaways, uh, the other thing is, I guess I, I have a, a weird morality. I feel like uh, I'm not going to enter it if I don't want it, because if I do win, then somebody who actually did want it didn't win, and I just got it, and I feel like weird about that. So I don't usually enter in giveaways unless I do really want the item. Um, but raffles... Uh, I'm also super particular about entering. Uh, usually I only enter raffles of people that I've been following for a while or like trust or, you know, know the person or whatever. So I know it's legit and it's got to be something that I want. Like um, the last raffle I entered and I and I did win um, was uh, when Papa Pixel raffled off his uh, Game Boy Pie. Um, yeah. That Which was is, a good one. It was a great win, honestly. It's a great system. But uh, I was like, oh, you know what? That would be really cool to have. And for like, you know, whatever it was, $10, whatever, yeah, I'll throw in a spot. You know, he's a good dude. I know him. And, you know, if I win, that'll be cool. And I did. And I was like, oh, this is great. But like, I maybe had entered one like maybe six months before that. Like, I don't enter them often. So that I guess that's also why I don't really feel the need to run them is because I don't enter them in as yeah. much. Yeah. So I just don't see, I don't, 
I don't personally see the draw, so I guess I don't really want to run them because I'm not drawn to it. So I guess I'm on the opposite side of of raffles. What do you? So what do you guys? Yeah, I was gonna say if you're ever weary about running your raffle, what I do is I'll kind of post a picture of what I'm gonna raffle on my story, maybe 12 to 24 hours before I'm gonna raffle it. Raffle it, mm-hmm. and I would say, hey, would you be interested in a raffle for this? Ten dollars mm-hmm. per spot, ten spots, and I'll throw the poll sticker up, yes or no. That's smart. And then whoever votes yes, I then when I post the raffle, I then tag them in the photo, so they kind of already showed interest. So I'm hoping that they'll actually join the raffle then. Yeah. Okay. And when it comes to raffles for the ones that I've done, it's only the rare items that someone can't afford yes. right away, you know, or that you you just don't see in the wild that often, right. or you know. You, you've wanted this item, but you're not going to get it for the price that you want to get it for. Like a, like a I top loader. I've, like, yeah. people don't come across those often. But no, the they game don't. that I also found that people really want is Conqueror's Bad Fur Day on N64. Oh I ran like three of those raffles in a row, and I had $7 per spot, uh, 11 spots. So it was valued at 77 And what I did was just go on eBay. And throw lowball offers of fifty at everyone I could find, and some people mm-hmm. would accept. So I mean, I'm profiting twenty seven bucks on each one, but I mean that's a quick twenty seven bucks. Yeah, yeah. I... So then shipping with it, three bucks. you're looking at a little bit, like twenty bucks. Yeah, twenty to do plus around. bucks. Yeah, it's just I mean, like they were filling in the half hour, forty five minutes for so for quick, yeah. quick uh, twenty twenty three dollars profit. I mean, I'll take that. Yeah. So is this your full time job? Right, is right now selling? it is. So all throughout college, I worked okay. on campus and had an internship. So I was working, doing classes, but also buying and se- buying and selling on the side. Um, when I'm buying and selling, I'm going to, I'm like I said, I'm checking Facebook Marketplace every 30 minutes or so, which is when I got time. Just it's a quick refresh. Scroll through, see if I can find anything. I'm checking Letgo. I'm going to garage sales. Um, I don't know how it is for you guys, but for garage sales here in Michigan before all Corona are thursday friday and saturday and they used to happen during the summer obviously and i worked monday through friday every summer so i was unable to go thursday and friday but on saturday i'd kind of get up early try to track down the ones that started on saturday or go to garage sales and try to when you're going on saturday you're basically getting scraps unless you find new ones and every garage sale that i go to i kind of peek around and I go up to the person right in the sale. Hey, by any chance, do you have any video games I'm looking for? And I give them a list of systems. Every person at every garage sale. I don't care if you, like I said, I went to, well, I went to one garage sale when I first started collecting and reselling. Old couple had couches and lamps out. Nothing of value that I was looking for. But I said, hey, do you have any video games for sale? And I gave them a list. And the guy goes, oh, I got one N64 game. And I'm like, great. Goes inside, pulls it out, sealed copy of Zelda or Ocarina of Time. And I'm like, <laughs> no. I'm like, oh my God. And I'm like, how much do you want? And he goes, I don't know, make me an offer. Me being the guy I am, some people are going to hate this. I said, I'll give you 10 bucks. He was more than happy to take it. I even handed him a 20 and said, do you have change? <laughs> uh... <laughs> Did you sell it or do you still have it? I sold it the day after for 200 you go but that was oh my, that was four years ago do you realize how, yeah do you realize how much yes. that's going that was right that, was, that was four years ago so i'm, I'm i kicked myself that was strictly when i was reselling not collecting but as a reseller if you can turn 10 to 224 hours you're having a good day so i'm just yeah, mad sure. at myself now but it, like i go to garage sales i ask everybody do you have anything um i try to stay away from estate sales unless I'm just really desperate because it's usually a company running it and they look everything up, but I've had a mm-hmm. few good scores at, at uh, estate sales, but Facebook marketplace is usually my go-to. Um, so brand new, you're looking at 900 to 1500. Really? Yo. Mm-hmm. Wow. I wish I would have got that. Speaking of sealed. Yeah. Um, yeah, I went and picked up. I saw this guy posted a, Hey, I saw this actually. Super Smash Brothers. Yeah. So he posted a yeah. Keep going. He posted a Facebook he, on Facebook Marketplace. He posted a GameCube with three games: Smash Bros, Mario Kart, and I want to say Mario Party Five for eighty. Message him. Hey, I'll take it. Or I said, Hey, is it still available? 
He then changes the price to 120. And I'm like, hey, why'd you change the price to 120? He goes, sorry, I did some research. It's worth a little more. I go, well, would you take um, 100? He goes, I always said, would you take 90? He said, I'll take 100. I said, deal. I go, what's your address? He ends up being in my own sub. And I'm like, okay, this is sweet. Four minutes away. So I drive to his house, talk to him on his porch, or I give him the 100 bucks. I looked in the bag and I'm like, I just see the like the silicone wrap or whatever. I'm like, oh my God. And I get, because those, those three banger games, and I get in the car and I pull out Smash Sealed. And I'm like, wow. Because you just couldn't tell there from the go. picture. So, I mean, I made my money back in that lot plus profit. And I've never sent a game to WADA before, but I sm- sent Smash off to WADA about a month ago. So it should be coming back soon. But a free sealed Smash Bros. Melee. There you go. That's good. And how much is that going for? Do you know? Corona kind of spiked the price. I saw a couple of them going for about 500. um, But I think price charting has it around 200. It was black label, but it is the best seller version. Yeah, I I see one newly listed right now for 300 brand. But I mean, if it's quote unquote free, I'll take it. Yeah. Yeah. And Absolutely. One is one got a nine point six rating from Wada for eight hundred fifty bucks. It's listed for mine had a small pinhole on the back seal, which is gonna hurt the grade. But I know Wada yeah. grades it like they grade the seal and then they grade the box, like two separate mm-hmm. grades. So I mean the seal should hold I think the seal is out of like an A B C D scale, and then the grade is actually out of like a ten point scale. Yeah, I've been meaning to send some stuff to Wada as well, but it's expensive. Just, really? How much is it? I was so for the thirty day turnaround. I think they have like one day turnaround, and then uh. they have like one day turnaround, which is expensive. <laughs> and then so, oh, and then they have yeah. like thirty day turn. They have like one day, fifteen day, thirty day, and like a hundred and eighty day or something like that. Ew. So I did the thirty day turnaround, and I was all in seventy dollars. Are you serious for one game? But they charge you like $20 in return shipping because it's got like $300 of insurance on it. Yeah, it's what you value it at. Yeah. I even even undervalued it to get the return shipping down. But well, I was going to say, Bo, we could, I mean, when you go, when we go to too many games, I'm pretty sure they have a booth that they can do something there. If you, okay. I think you can get things graded there. They do it 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 on the spot. I don't I don't know because I've never gotten anything great. I think I've they been- did, but I, I think they're going to be overran oh with it this year. I do. I do like baseball crazy. cards, too, and sending in to PSA to get baseball cards graded like PSA has been has been closed due to Corona. So they're slowly starting to back up. So they're slammed. But uh, I know VGA for games was also closed, but WADA was open and. Mm-hmm. There's just some of those companies going to be so overrun, but it is expensive to get a game graded. And I'm not going to turn around and flip it. It is something to sit on my shelf and kind of like ponder, like look at, because Smash Melee is one of the most iconic GameCube games ever. Yeah. yeah. And that's one thing that I've actually been thinking about when buying video games now is what is going up in price? What are the great games that people mm-hmm. will want, you know, in the future that, are cheap now you know and it's the it's the great games that are super fucking cheap right do you know now, smash too. melee is the most yeah. selling gamecube game of all time no i did not it know is. that which, I, which normally i could normally that, when you yeah. see like most selling of all time cheap game but it, that game still holds 50 to 75 dollars in value any game with mario on it though will exactly on yeah because it's... they're playable and they're they're well done games but yeah, I, I just recently bought Link to the Link to the Pass uh for SNES for C I B. Uh very clean box with manual and with the map. Uh for a decent price, was able to talk the guy down. And it's because I know that game probably in five years with how the market's going is gonna triple in value. And these like easily these corona prices have spiked things like crazy. Yeah, I, I sold off my whole N64 collection I, because I of thought it. about it. Like I'm going for the full sex. I thought about it, but Mario 64 on N64 was a twenty to thirty dollar game before Corona. Yep. It's fetching fifty dollars now. I couldn't give yep. away Wii systems last year for thirty bucks. Yep. I'm selling Wii systems on eBay for 150 to 200 bucks. 
Yeah, I just sold one locally for like 65 just like basic one yep. controller. I sold a Wii yeah. system locally last week. Uh, Wii system, Mario Kart, and Wii Sports for 100 Yeah, there you go. Yeah, it's weird the stuff that people are buying right now. Like, it's crazy that that the prices have jumped in the fashion that it has. But it also, in a similar sense, it kind of sucks because, like, right now, like, I... I'm selling, like, I cannot keep an NES on my shelf uh, at my brick and mortar store. Lo- so locally? Like, yeah, I cannot keep an NES on a shelf. Like, it'll sell within, a, like, a couple days. What do you, a what system do you have or, or a game? Well, I had, this was before Corona. It was, like, 70 bucks. And wow. and it was, like, controllers and, and cables, you know. And then I had games separate, you know. And then it was, like... I couldn't keep them on for more than a couple days. So I was trying to buy NESs, but the thing was, and especially right now is I was trying to restock because it was closed. Uh, the physical location was closed due to the coronavirus. So we weren't having any incoming people. People were just like doing curbside pickups or whatever, if they scheduled something, but like, I was like, well, when we reopen, I want to be able to have a good stock of stuff. So when people are coming back in like blah, blah, blah. So I'm out here trying to find NESs and I can't find them for like any less than like people are like, here is one system with one game for like 150 bucks. I'm like, wow. <laughs> before before Corona, I was selling locally NESs like system only for like 40 bucks locally. And I was lucky to get that. But now during Corona, I'm selling NESs with Duck Hunt for like 80 bucks locally. And they're flying off the shelves. They're starting to slow down a little bit with kind of the stay at home order being lifted, but they're they're still hot. The one game that's shocked me, and I don't know if you guys have heard about it, is Def Jam Fight for New York on PS2. Yes. I have that is one of the more expensive ones. I had that in my collection. Before Corona, that was a seventy dollar game. On eBay, mm-hmm. it's going like one fifty to one sixty now. That's nuts. Yeah, I think my uh my one that I uh during corona that i was like damn was the animal crossing for gamecube oh i know God. i said it on here it's like almost a hundred dollar game and i remember selling multiple copies i think of i it talked in the about last it couple years yeah for like 20 bucks yep 30 bucks i sold a player's choice copy with the memory card for 99 dollars on ebay yeah it's nuts it's crazy that the prices have spiked this much, but it's like great for us because like right now I'm selling out of a lot of like the back inventory or like I was just coming through my collection, you know, a couple weeks ago. I was like, you know, what do I what am I not really playing that's kind of collecting dust that I can part with and maybe I'll get back later or maybe yep. I won't and I won't really care. And I ended up selling a, my copy of Go Go Hyper Grind. Wow. On Instagram. Wait, when did you sell that? Oh, uh, maybe last month or the month before i don't remember it all blends together okay um but i Both had shows. gotten it <laughs> no you have it no i'm not because i'm about to mention just something about that game as well um, so keep going i uh i had bought it off of facebook marketplace um probably two maybe three years ago from a lady who was selling it for five dollars oh, and she was when i met up with her i bought it and you know handed her five dollar bills like oh great thank you and she was like yeah i bought it for my kids but it's definitely not for kids so i just (laughs) need to get rid of it and i was like okay great (laughs) yeah how is facebook marketplace by your guys's house because i know here if a lot like that gets posted and you're if you're not messaging within the first 30 seconds it's gone you're 15th in line it's hard. I don't know. You don't Kelly's do. probably on it. I'm not on Facebook and I'm on offer no, up. Get... I'm on offer up and all I see is Kelly's post. You need to get so on Facebook Marketplace, Bo. It's the most popular one right now. Um Marketplace is good, uh, but you do have to be quick. Um I've had a lot of people like it's I think it's hit or miss. Uh if I find a good deal, I jump on it. Um I'm pretty quick about it. If I can make it like cuz I was still working. Mm-hmm. Uh today was my last day of work cuz I work for a school, so it was the last day of school. So woo woo. Um I'm done and I'm Congrats. Today. Congrats. Yeah. Uh so now I'm in my summer grind mode, which was usually I would yard sale and flea market at any point in time. I would just get up and go. Are yard um, sales happening for you right now or no? uh yes no not yet no yes they are are they yes they are if you were on facebook marketplace you would see all the posts about them can i throw out two uh two tips 
So yeah. for yard sales, I like to use an app called Yard Sale Treasure. Sorry, Yard Sale Treasure Map, and that like. <laughs> That documents all the yard sales that are posted on, I believe, Facebook and Craigslist and puts them literally on a map for you. There's a free version and a, right there's a free version and a paid version. Yard sale treasure map. Definitely check it out. And then also for Facebook Marketplace, when I see a deal that's crazy that I want, I type, hey, I'll take it. And then my next message is, can you mark it as sold? Because when they mark it as sold, you can still message them, but it's off Facebook. If they just mark it as pending or they don't do anything, it could be posted for 20 and you could be on your way, but then somebody could be like, hey, I'll offer you 40 and they could backdoor you and you won't get the lot. Oh, yeah. I mean, I've been backdoored countless times on Facebook Marketplace or like I, I'd be like, uh, like there have been so many times where I am going to get it or I'm, you know, have set up a time to get like depending on my work schedule or whatever, like set up a time to come get it. And then they'll be like, Oh, never mind, It's sold. And it's like, dude, what if you had said you that you get in the market is sold. Time. That's the key. Yeah. So I, yeah, I would, uh, I'll try that from now on, but like, yeah, it's, it's a 50, 50 shot with that. There yep. are, I mean, I feel like recently it's been kind of dry or hard to get stuff just due to the Corona situation and, um, people like having the time, to realize that video games are worth money like you were saying you're selling wii's like all day for like 100 bucks or whatever i can't find a wii for cheap anymore because so many people are selling them yep. for a higher price because they're you know wising up to it i guess it's like you know i would find wii fit boards at goodwill for days for like two dollars and now there's there was forty dollars. I'm seeing them all over. Yep. And I'm like, oh, yeah. I've sold a couple of Wii Fits and like the Wii Fit game for like twenty, just to kind of get them moving. And people have bought them. But when I see those, like I used to always say, when I see those at a garage sale or Salvation Army, those will be around after the apocalypse. Like those things are going oh. nowhere. Yeah. No, it's it's nuts. But yeah, I don't know. It's it's. I feel like it's kind of dry right now. But I also feel like it's dry because I'm used to right now being the time where I'm at. Mm -hmm. the flea market i'm at the yard sales i'm you know making pickups all over the place because you know whatever it's it's kind of crazy that you know i can't go out and do those things right now but like it's just a whole different whole different world right now and i, I want to get back to being able to go to yard sales and thrift stores because i miss them definitely like, <laughs> same like everything is still closed here in michigan i hit my first garage sale of the year today i was just going to get gas and i saw a sign but I mean, sub sales are not going to happen. I feel like here in Michigan, uh, community sales, flea markets, things like that. Because like we're still on the stay at home order till June twelfth, and people are scared. But if you're checking Facebook Marketplace, like I said, I check every thirty minutes if I got time, just a quick scan. People are posting so much stuff for free because they can't have the garage sales and they're at home, like stuck at home, and they're doing the spring cleaning, just free. Come grab it, and it's not just video games. You can make money on all kinds of things. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I saw everything on eBay. That's the thing. Yes. Also, is that, you know, it's not just video games. For What's me. your favorite non video game everything. item to sell? Uh, high designer magazines, I guess. I just sold one for 175 really? bucks. So, Damn. yeah. Wow. Good That's to know. Nuts. Yeah. I think you got to know what you're looking for. These are visionary magazines, so I'm pretty sure they still publish them, but they're limited quantity. So they're at the time they were only being published 1500 at a time. And my parents owned designer stores back in the day. So hopefully they don't listen to this <laughs> because they'll know that I've been selling them. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, I don't think they do anymore. But uh, yeah, just sold one for 175 they go all day oh. like people people eat them up like crazy and i don't understand why but it's the same thing with video games like people that don't play video games don't understand why people collect and pay ridiculous amounts for video games which goes into my thing that i was going to say about gogo -Go hyper hyper grind is that i owned a seal copy of gogo -Go hyper grind that i won off of like a 15 dollar wrap wow. um and at the time, it was valued probably at 300 bucks. Now it's valued at probably $600, $700. There you go. I listed, I listed one 
for $999.99. And if you look up Go Go Hyper Grind right now on eBay and you click on filter and you click on sold, you'll see that my copy sold for $999.99. Wow. How long, would, how long would you, did you sell that? Uh, this was just last week and it was up for a few hours and it sold right away. Wow. That's like, yeah. so but, like, if you look at like, but wait, sorry, let me ahead. finish. Let me finish. He messaged me right away, I guess, or that night when I was already asleep. And he's like, my bad. I thought it said five ninety nine. dollars <sighs> What? Man. And I, I woke up or I woke up at like two 30 in the morning to take a pee. And I saw his message. And I was like, I am not even getting into this right now. So I went back to sleep woke up at six or seven and uh messaged him back and i was like whoa what do you mean you know like that's fine i'm not selling it to you for 600 bucks yeah <laughs> and he's like well i'm obviously good for 600 if you wanted wanted to but uh you know whatever you want to do and i was like well i listed it for a thousand it's only sealed copy right now up on ebay uh so i'm pretty firm on my price uh i'm more than happy to refund you your money you know for you fucking mm -hmm. up but i didn't say that you know and it was a, a bunch of you know him waiting like he messaged me right back as soon as i messaged him in the morning at seven in the morning like message me right back and then out. it was yeah oh probably all night um but like i'm not i told him i was like i don't want to take anyone's money that's not happy with their transaction i was like this game though is rare is it a thousand dollars rare probably not it's more more me just putting it out there into the world like i used to play this mmo rpg when i was a teenager called maple story like crazy and I had some super rare items in that game. And I would put my store up when I was in high school. And I would sell something that was, you know, $300 million in this currency. And I would come back and I'm like, who the fuck bought this? <laughs> like, this was just a random number that I put up that was way too much for this item. But someone bought it because they were like, cool, I have this, this amount of money and I want this item you know and it's this rare of an item that i upgraded a certain way that nobody else has so i was like you know let me do this with ebay and sure enough like it worked but then i still refunded the guy his money um because he wasn't willing to pay the thousand bucks and i was like that's fine i was like i know this game will go up to a thousand bucks probably within the next it year honestly hot. Mm -hmm. super hot correct me if i'm wrong so like, you saw on ebay for like your job you were saying um when somebody buys and cancels do you get do yeah. you get refunded the ebay seller fees because on, on a thousand yep. thousand dollar order you're looking at like uh, 130 bucks in fees i i yep. don't think you get i, well, I yeah, don't yeah, think yeah. you get refunded if they return the item uh yeah no you, you do? do actually i yeah, it depends on the return, but yeah, no, I mean, there's ways all around it that you'll get refunded no matter what, um, especially if you accept the return and yep. all that. Yeah, all right, cool. I didn't know. Absolutely. Yeah. So, I mean, with him refunding, like with me refunding him, it was nine hundred seventy-two dollars. So that was the PayPal fee that that gets taken out yep. right away. You know, was that twenty-eight bucks or whatever, whatever it was. Um, so the eBay fees never came out because that comes out once yes. a month. So that didn't come out yet. So it was $972 that was refunded. But, you know, he left me a good review. He was like, my dumbass bought this game and Bo was super nice and refunded me. Do you still have it posted or no? Sake. Yeah, I reposted it. I was actually going to post it for $100 more. <laughs> <laughs> so at $1,100... Because it still shows up as a sold item. It's the last yeah. sold item for GoGo -Go Hyper Grind. But I was like, and I was going to take new pictures of it and, and be that type of guy. But I was like, you know, fuck it. Like, I'm already asking too much. Another guy has one up right now for $700, $699 um, right now with like a poster, an advertisement poster. So he saw his window of 
opportunity that he can get the next best price. And at six hundred dollars, like I could have went with it and been fine, but I was like, you know, fuck it, like I might might as well just grade this yeah. and see what it's worth. But at seventy bucks, I don't necessarily really even want to. It's got to it. be worth it. I would say it's probably worth it on an item like that. The only other sealed GameCube game I have is like Harvest Moon, another or A Wonderful Life, one of those, which is only valued at like fifty yeah. bucks sealed. So if it's valued at yeah. fifty bucks and you're spending seventy bucks to get it graded, I don't feel like it's worth it there. No. Yeah. It's it's cool. I've never graded a game. I don't own a graded game, but kind of the acrylic cases that it comes in and just that it's, it just it looks aesthetically pleasing, personally. Yeah. And I th- Yeah, there's only uh there's only one game that I have that's sealed that I, I I would even, you know, think about getting graded, but it's also I don't know, I, I'm 50-50 on it, but it was in again I did a similar thing to you where some guy had a Super Nintendo lot last year. I bought it. And I didn't realize that the games were sealed that were in the box because it was like a couple loose games, a system and some box games. And it was like it wasn't like I I couldn't tell what the loose games were. So I was like taking a gamble on that. But the box games, it was like Vegas stakes and something else that wasn't super high end. And then Super Star Wars. And I was like, oh, Super Star Wars would be cool to have in a box. I'd keep that. But the rest, you know, maybe I'd sell it. Maybe there's a maybe there's a loose game, whatever. And I got it for a good deal, so I bought it, and I go pick it up, and all the box games are sealed. And I'm like, oh. Dope. All of them? Okay. All the box games oh. that they had were sealed. So four, I had four sealed Super Nintendo games, and uh, Super Star Wars was one of them. And I was like, well, I'm a huge Star Wars fan, so I'm probably out of all of this, I'll probably keep this a sealed copy, like, and I'll sell the rest. But I have it sitting on my shelf, and I don't collect sealed because I want to play my games. So I just thought yep. it was a super cool piece and yeah, I could I could get it graded. Like I have thought about it, but I also am like, oh, I don't know. But yeah, I just looked on price charting and it has it at ninety nine ninety nine for new. So I don't know how accurate that is. But um if you're gonna grade it's, I would go VGA. When I was doing it for my yeah. first time I mean no, I'm, I'm sorry. I I'm sorry, WADA. I'm sorry, I meant to say WADA. Yeah, WADA. I was Wada. my next thing. Yeah, WADA. I was doing WADA. Um it seems to be more popular in the community right now. And I was yeah, looking at the websites. And the VGA website is very clunky and hard to use. The mm-hmm. WADA yeah. website, step by step, smooth process, super ready easy. to go. Super easy. Great guy with the community. He's like good friends with J Bam, yep. yeah. who is For, one of my good friends. Or that, man or whatever. Is his yeah. Name? yeah. 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 Seems like a good guy. No, but that was, that lot was where I got shoot. What did I sell you, Bo? That Super Nintendo game that was like uh, links away, links to the past, but wasn't linked to the past, and it was like super expensive. Um, oh, what is what it? Was that game? It was like a weird fly under the radar title that I had never heard of, and I played it, and I was like, "This is interesting." And then I looked up the price, and I was like, "Okay, I'm gonna sell this." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of money. Super it was like a ninety dollars. Uh, was it like, was it like Ace? No. Uh, uh, he throws a hat. Yes. as a weapon um i'm gonna have to I'm gonna i try. forget yeah I'm gonna look it up. it's I'm... not an rpg but it's it's more like links links awakening Speaking of or... links awakening and things like that did you guys know that like 007 on game boy color is like a links awakening remake remake no a 007 it's what? either on game boy color or game boy and i've never personally played it but people say it's really like links awakening and like links to the past like it's like like a clone of those. I have no way. I have 007 for Game Boy, I'm pretty sure. It's I don't one I might of have those. it for Game Boy Color. But so I might have to look into it, but I that have you upgrade weapons and stuff. I've sorry, people are gonna hate me for this, but I've never played a Zelda game. Um <laughs> What? I don't like RPGs. We're ending this <laughs> right now. Hey, it's okay. It's okay not to like RPGs. RPGs not are not my forte. Play. So I've never played a Zelda game. That's all right. But I've just heard from people like selling the game or people who are buying it. That's like, this is very similar to Zelda. Hmm. James a- Bond 007 uh, for uh, Game Boy. I it. it was uh, the Twisted Tales of Spike McFang. Hmm. Oh, yeah, that's it. It's $110 now. But uh, yeah. No, um, yeah. I'll have to look it up. I had, I, I have, I'm going through 
I'm trying to work on my um, Game Boy collection right now with my labels and stuff. I've been super behind on it, but I have an idea where I want to like play a game a day kind of thing for Game Boy or Game Boy Color and like almost write a small little snippet of like, this is what I thought about it for playing it for a little bit or, you know, like literally a short, like just a couple hours of my day just playing a game from my my collection on Game Boy or Game Boy Color and just being like, this is what I think of this game and, you know, whatever. So I kind of want to look into the 007. That'd be right awesome. And see if, if that's a true thing. That'd be I awesome. Know. I'd definitely read it. <laughs> Sweet. I got one. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Well, um, what do you think, but we're almost at two hours here on this. I know. We're we're running a little late. Chris, how are you with everything? I'm, I'm good. It's been a pleasure talking with you guys and just talking video games for the past hour and fifty four minutes. Yeah, it's, it's fun, right? Like, I could honestly go all day. I know people don't want to listen all yeah, day, no, but it's so much fun. I don't like I got my local buddy who collects games, but when I try to talk to my parents and my girlfriend, they're like, Okay, shut up. I don't care. So yeah. it's it's all cool right. to talk to people who are actually in the community and enjoy the stuff and you can just kind of bounce ideas and things off each other. Yeah, and that's what our podcast is about right now is, you know, just highlighting people from the community and talking about the things that we want to talk about, you know, which is video games, collecting, buying and selling and, you know, upgrading stuff. Yeah. Uh, I mean, there was one thing that I wanted to mention was this awesome pickup that I got. Oh, yeah, let's, I got let's hear about this. That I want beer. to hear bragging. <laughs> 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 So it all happened with the Wii U key that I needed a long time ago. And if if you're a listener of Precisely Podcast, you would know that I've needed a Wii U key since I've gotten the Wii U kiosk. And I locked a bunch of games in my Wii U kiosk somehow uh, accidentally. This is and... a saga. This is not just any kind of <laughs> yeah. this is a, It's literally a saga between you and this kiosk. I'm ready to. Yeah. So Kelly's friend, uh, Corey, oh, Cody. let her Cody. Sorry. Sorry. Corey, Cody. Um, <laughs> he, <laughs> he let her borrow a Wii U kiosk, which I still have not me. given back yet. Yes. And, uh, true. so I was able to open it from that, you know, but it was this whole big ordeal. I messaged a bunch of people, eBay people too about it nobody was going to sell me one for like less than 100 bucks it was ridiculous so i just sort of gave up hope i was like whatever you know and i went back on ebay just a little bit ago like two weeks ago and i'm looking at wii u kiosk and i'm reading descriptions and this one guy's like i got a bunch of wii u kiosk keys that will come with this wii u kiosk and i'm like cool my man so i messaged him i'm like can i get one of those keys that you have and he's like how much are you willing to pay I said you know under 50 bucks would be ideal for me he's like if you can give me 45 sure i was like awesome you're my man here's 45 bucks and he sent it to me right away and i was like oh you live pretty close to me i saw his address and he was like yeah i do you know i was like what else you got he's like i got a bunch of stuff He's like, I've been uh, selling video games for 20 plus years. I was like, what does that mean? And he's like, I worked for GameStop for 20 years and I'm still working for them. So I've seen a lot of different generations of systems and stuff. And I was like, let me know what you have, <laughs> you know, because he <laughs> does not have anything on his eBay besides this Wii U kiosk. So he has a Wii kiosk, which I was considering, but I don't have room for it. Um, he had a DS demo unit, which I already own one, but this was an upgraded version of the one that I had, like with like extra advertisements and stuff. Doesn't have the actual DS unit in it, but I was like, yeah, I'm interested in that as well. A uh, bunch of stuff, and I was like, yes. So. Uh, oh, a Super Smash Brothers Llama, which, if you're familiar with llamas, are the display units that are like a round cylindrical display unit, mainly for 
I think Wii and Wii U they were popular for. Um, a llama? A llama, they're called. Oh, I'm picturing like the animal. <laughs> yeah, no, no. It's like this. No. It's like a tube. Bo- a tube Bo- of. Bo- owns a llama that lives in his backyard and it has like just the stamp of <laughs> just like Super Smash Brothers on the side or whatever. Yeah, and- no, I own two llamas <laughs> now, actually. Yes, and yeah. Glad we got that cleared up. <laughs> it's on him. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, he had a bunch of not non not for resale cartridges. So I got Majora's Mask, uh, Super Smash Brothers, for both for 3DS, and then uh, Pokemon Emerald, uh, not for resale cartridge as well for Game Boy Advance. Are you collecting uh, not and- for resales now? I forgot to ask you. Oh, I have been. Yeah, oh. it's one thing that I don't think is that popular of a thing to collect for. I do right a little now. bit. But, but will be very popular. Did the guy know what he? Did the guy know the values of what he had? Uh yeah, to a to a certain degree, but super nice about that's things, good. You know, yeah, like it was all free to yeah. him type deals. You know, so it was profit to him either exactly. way. You know, but he he understood the value of it all, um, and and a great dude. So. That and then uh Wii U demo disc for the Wii U kiosk oh, that I right. bought as well. So we we got a number on that. I was like, cool, let's meet up. The state, you know, it was like two weeks prior that we talked about it. I was like, I'll hit you up the day before. Everything was good. We talked a bunch of different times between then. But then we met up halfway in between our houses, which was great last weekend. And uh he brought me so much more stuff so much more stuff that i was just like dude what the hell (laughs) he brought me a tablecloth that had nintendo ds gamecube uh and game boy advance sp like logo stuff on it yeah which like that's priceless i've never seen anything you just don't find for sale you don't find it yeah um he brought me a 2006 mario electric toothbrush <laughs> I, clean I was that. like this is dope and it's brand new you know still in the box and stuff um uh mario kart connects lego type thing oh yeah uh, was this all throw like in or did you have to pay for it this was all throw in stuff on top of what i yeah. just talked wow. about yeah that's awesome uh yeah star fox patch uh twilight princess uh cd like musical cd sealed uh mario galaxy coin for its release like it's coin yeah 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 like that like like shit like that i was just like dude this is way too much stuff he's like it's cool he's probably like when i met him oh yeah so much and i looked at him when i was pulling up I was like, this motherfucker looks like me. Like, big beard, tattoos all up. You know, fucking... All we did was talk about beer and whiskey and fucking (laughs) video games for 40 minutes outside of a Sheets parking lot. You know? I was like, this is great. Yeah. So, yeah. Shout out to you, Steve, if you're listening to this. Uh, Thank you for everything. I appreciate it. Another reason why I need to get on Facebook, there's a kiosk group on Facebook that's pretty big. And you probably could have had oh, your yeah. Wii U kiosk key a long time ago. But you probably, would have never found all this yeah. stuff with Steve. Yeah, and that's true. I actually uh, got contacted by someone recently to 3D print PS2 controller arms for me and PS1 controller nice. arms. But I got to send them the metal parts of the controller arms, which I don't really want to do. Yeah. Um, and it it's a little bit too pricey for me. So we'll I had see. the opportunity at a PS2 kiosk on the west side of Michigan for 200 I believe the price was. But I, it's, it's, not it's not bad at all, and I really considered it. But the fact that I was like in college at the time, like I had the extra money, but just like you said, nowhere to put it. Like still living at home, two brothers, mm-hmm. family, dogs. Just My collection's on two bookshelves. I have zero place to put a PS2 kiosk. Yeah. 
So yeah. I'm in my kiosk room right now, and I have six kiosks staring at me and two llamas. And I'm not talking <laughs> about the animals like you guys think. They're in there but, uh, around and eating. Grass. Yeah. I got to get rid of one of them uh, real soon this weekend. Hopefully I am. Because uh, one one new one is coming in. Teaser. Uh-huh. Which is which is a, a GameCube kiosk. It's complete as Can far. I ask if it was by Wizard of Ninjas on Instagram? Yeah, it's my home. I, I, I talked to him every once in a while. He's a, he's a cool you. guy. I saw he posted all this stuff on his story, and I kind of swiped up and yeah. said, holy crap, on his like, uh, G- Tommy Hilfinger Game Boy Color kiosk. I was oh, like, that's... Tempting. Yeah, I, I helped him find really? that one. You know? Yeah. I was yeah. like, that's cool. He, yeah, he... Yeah. I helped them find that on eBay. I was like, yo, you should buy this because I didn't want to buy it at the time. It was too much for me and I should have now. But uh, yeah, no. And that's another thing that I wanted to mention is if you can't afford something right away, you should spit off that 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 fine to someone mm-hmm. else. You know, that you're like, hey, here's something that you can profit off of. If, if I can't right now because I can't afford it, here's something for you. Yeah, definitely. You know, like. Yeah, I feel like I do that a lot with you, especially when I see yeah, you do. Publicly. I'm like, uh, I have literally no space for this or whatever. And I'm like, here, if you want it, but this is a good yeah. deal. I saw there's something I was going to yeah, say. Yeah, you helped me out with, with that, that Nintendo DS yeah, uh, that, light. That light was cool. Sign. I was like, yeah. I, I don't know where I'd put that. Yeah, um, I saw something on Facebook Marketplace about some guy who was selling a uh, Switch kiosk and i was like maybe i should send this to Bo, but i was like mm-hmm. i don't know if he wants a switch kiosk <laughs> i would much rather have it go to somebody i know than just some other random reseller on facebook any day of the week yeah absolutely I yeah that- i got in a big argument with a, a person selling a ps4 and a switch kiosk on offer up being like motherfucker you don't know what the fuck <laughs> you're selling and the prices that you're asking we got in a huge really? argument for the longest time, and eventually I had to. Were they overcharging? But, yeah. Oh yeah, way too much, and didn't know, like the PS. Neither one of them had the systems, uh, and oh. the PS, PS4 kiosk didn't have the TV. Even. I know. So you're a kiosk so collector. It was just like, what are you selling for this much money? I, you know, yeah. like why are you? doing I know this? on the old like Super Nintendo kiosks, the systems actually say dev or like uh for kiosk use only demo, demo unit, unit on them yeah. do the ps4 and the xbox one kiosk also have that on them i don't think so i don't i don't know when it comes to ps4 and and uh mm-hmm. xbox i don't i don't think i think nintendo recently i mean somebody can tell me if i'm absolutely spouting lies but i believe that nintendo of in the late couple of years has been the only one to have like demo unit specifics like i think it's just an sega ex- sega did too no, i mean like I in, the, in the fact. recent years like okay the wii yeah it was a white demo unit yeah. you didn't have like a regular wii u in that kiosk like you know you know what i'm saying like um yeah it, it had story. a different number yeah i think like a different model number ps4 and the xbox you know were just i think they're just regular units I didn't. Yeah. I, don't I know. Different in any way. I know the Dreamcast had a different model number. Um, the older PS1, one. PS one. Yeah. Yeah. PS one had actual red sticker on it that said demo unit, like for for the kiosk only or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, with a different model number. I don't know about PS two actually. I'm sure. Uh, I'm sure they did. I think PS two yeah. had a different unit, but. And I know N64 did as yeah. well. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, kiosk collecting, man. You're crazy. It's fun. You're crazy I for just that, have but... zero room for it. I'll collect, like, sealed stuff, because, I mean, that takes up very little room. But kiosk and signages, they're awesome. Don't get me wrong on that. Just no room. I literally yeah. have one standee, and I can't figure out where the hell to put it, that it's not going to be in the way Which one is it? all the time. Um, I, it's just an Overwatch standee, um, that my friend got me, that he works at GameStop, so he would hook me up with some stuff sometimes, and he, he got me that one when he worked at the one that was close to me. Dumpster, so. dumpster diving story, I found a sealed Days Gone standee at Dumpster Diving at GameStop, 
and I ended up reselling it on like Facebook Marketplace for like 60 bucks just to kind of get it gone because it was so big. And one guy did hit me up to ship it, but when I took it to like UPS, it was like $110 to ship. Oh, yeah. It's ridiculous. Yeah, fuck that. It's pricing to ship huge things. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, but I mean, like, that's the other thing is like when, when game stops and stuff open, like, I cannot tell you how many times, like, I just, I, I just knew my local GameStop people from coming in and they would always be like, yeah, if you want anything, just tell us and like, we'll save it for you until we're done with that's it. Awesome. Like, as far as like signage and stuff like that, or, you know, like whatever. And like, sometimes they would just give me extra promo items. Sometimes it'd be like, like we had 300 of these and we have like 200 left. So I know you didn't order this game, but like, here's the promo for, I don't know, something, some game that came out. That's one thing I never got into is like kind of collector's editions and stuff. Cause I don't collect current gen stuff. Like I don't, I don't have a PS4, Xbox one or switch. So I don't collect any of the current gen stuff. Um, But just with the collector's items, it's never really appealed to me. Like this, like the uh, statues or the notebooks and stuff that come with them. It's just not really my thing. Same. There's like a. I don't like. I don't like the statues. You gotta be really specific. Um. Yeah. I. I don't really co- do collectors editions unless it's something that I really want. Like, there was. Uh, I kick myself for not buying it, but um, a couple of years ago when they were like cleaning out GameStops of you know like clearancing items, they had like a sale on the borderlands collection and it came with a claptrap statue and i really wanted that but like the original price like 300 dollars. i cannot spend 300 dollars on that or something like that and it was down to like 60 or something and i was like oh i really want that and i like couldn't find it anywhere and i was like damn it i like i should like now looking back like i should have found it you know and traveled for it kind of thing mm-hmm. like i didn't i should have looked at out of area but like it's like that like i have to love the game and it has to be an item that like i really want like even with the new borderlands that came out i love borderlands but i didn't love what came with the collector's edition so i didn't buy the collector's edition i just bought the edition with the steelbook so it was like you have i don't know it has to be something that i want it has to be something that like i'm gonna have space for and like i I don't know like statues it's like a 50 50 shot because i i don't have a ton of space but statues are super cool like a lot of the um i don't know if you've seen like the the first four figures statues that they make i really like those but like i have no space for them but i was like debating on getting the luigi's mansion one just because i love luigi's mansion and i feel like they never have enough stuff for (laughs) luigi's mansion yeah (laughs) and i have like space on my shelf between my tvs that look really good with like a huge statue right there but it has to be like a statue that's good like yeah. it has to be something that i love so i've been like debating that and it's only like 100 120 bucks which i don't feel like it's a bad price for a statue no but uh i just i just haven't pulled the plug on it yet i don't know we'll see maybe i'll do it over quarantine because the ebay sales have been good <laughs> <laughs> so mm-hmm. treat yourself treat yourself well gentlemen Shall we uh shall we wrap this thing up? I think that sounds like a plan. I am down for that. All right. Yeah. It's been uh a lot of fun talking about a topic I feel like all three of us are very seasoned, very knowledgeable about. And I'm sure we have not even touched on the stories that we could tell about garage sales no. and flea market buys and pickups on offer up and things like that. So Yeah, I just want to say thank you to you guys for having me on. This was a ton of fun and i know you guys said this is going a little long but i mean like i said i feel like i could go all night with just the amount of stories and just knowledge that all three of us have so i want to say thank you thank you absolutely thank you again for having me on this was a ton of fun yeah no problem absolutely yeah we would love to have you back on too um definitely gave me knowledge into a world that i'm familiar with but unfamiliar with too you know There's always more uh, to learn we all we all we all sell things differently but we're all hustlers and that's a great thing about it you know yeah oh. it's all about coming up a little bit to to get to the collection that you want to definitely you know? yeah there's literally a sign on my desk that i'm staring at right now as i record this that says every day i'm hustling because <laughs> that's 
it's everybody is just like damn you're such a hustler like all the time my fiance is like you just you're hustling literally 23 of the 24 hours a day like it's you need to take a break i'm like no there's no breaks I'd, you're hustling i'd be yep. lying if i <laughs> said i didn't blast that song at full volume after a few good face of marketplace scores <laughs> i would be I, lying <laughs> No, it's fair. I usually do uh, Beyonce's Diva because the Diva is a male version of a hustler. So that's where I go. <laughs> I love it. So, yeah, it's uh, it's been a good convo, guys. Check Facebook Marketplace, Appreciate- know your knowledge, and have enough space. I think are the three things we touched on today <laughs> at the most. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and I, I'm sure I can speak for everybody. You know, if you if you have any questions about selling items or appraising items or whatever you know feel free to reach out and ask us because we've got the knowledge yeah and where can people uh, follow you chris uh so i'm on instagram at c-o-u-s-i dot retro dot games and i'm also on twitter at c-o-u-s-i games cool Right on. And you can follow me at Bose B E A U S underscore game room. And Kelly. You can find me riding all night on the highway to Kel with no underscores. And I really shouldn't tell you how to spell it because I feel like we all can get You should there. know it. We can all get there. Yeah. So just get there. And uh also make sure to follow us on the socials at precisely podcast. Make sure to listen in on past episodes and get your entries in for the giveaway because that's going to be a good time. And, Bo, we should really start putting that box together. (laughs) Yeah, we should. (laughs) But, uh, yeah, it's going to be a giveaway. It's going to be fun. So get in on it. It's going to be awesome. We'll talk. Yeah, we'll talk about it after this. Um. Yeah, so what? This is episode 49. So 48 and 47, we also put secret codes in. So listen to those fully to find the code and DM us at Precisely Podcast on Instagram uh, to be entered and have a, a second and third entry. Yes, yes. And we'll do a fourth entry and then we'll be done. Our 50th episode will be the fourth entry. And 50 hype. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's exciting. Fifty episodes. That's I know crazy. we got we got to think about something special for fiftieth episode, Kelly. Yeah, I've been I've been thinking. I have some some thoughts. So the president okay. of Nintendo is going to be on. Yeah, we have yeah, red props coming on. <laughs> <laughs> the... He's not with Nintendo anymore, though. Yeah, but is it the new guy yeah, named but... actually Bowser or something like that? Yeah, yeah, no. yeah Bowser. Yeah. Yeah, but Reggie would be. I would love to have Reggie just anywhere. Come on, yeah. I don't, I don't care who he's working for. I just feel like he'd be a great conversation. Same, yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, check out our website at precisely dot live. Not at, but just precisely dot live. www dot precisely dot live on the world wide web. Uh, Thank you, Chris, for being an awesome guest and giving us insight on buying and reselling and collecting. Yeah, thanks again. I hope everybody has a great night. And if you have any questions, feel free to DM me on Instagram. Hell yeah. Yeah. Have a good night, everyone. We out. We out. See ya.